Hey guys, dramatic black and white TJ coming at you today with another episode from that deep fat fried vault we've reached in and pulled out a classic. Uh, this one is about the death penalty. And this was the 33rd episode that we did uh, back in, I think, 2018. And uh, now it used to be for patrons only, but now we're uh, showing it to the rest of you guys. And remember, there's a, a bunch more content behind that old Patreon paywall. I often wonder if it's if I'm wise to publicly call it a paywall, since the word pay the words paywall. I don't know if it's if it's com. It's, I don't know if it's one word paywall or if it's two words pay space wall. But whether it's a word or it's a phrase, I don't know. I, I feel like it has a negative connotation, but I feel like it's honest as well. It is a wall you have to pay to get behind. But I think it's worth it because it's seven dollars, and you know if you want to uh, hop on the other side of that that wall for seven bucks and see what you can see, you can join. And uh, if you don't like it, you can leave. If you like it, but you know maybe you don't want to stay there for the whole year, you can you can uh, do it for a month or two. Uh, really helps us out. I know that much. Um, we we love having you guys support our content. We love being supported by users rather than advertisers. Um, not that we would turn ads down, of course, but you know, hey, uh, we're hustlers out there. We want to make some money. I'm sure you guys can relate. All of us out there need money, especially with this uh, economy and stuff. And that's why we try to give you guys some good ass entertainment and lots of it at what we think is a pretty reasonable uh, price. And uh, if you guys are big fans, you can always join the um, annual membership, get a little bit of a discount. I believe you get two months free if you join for a year. Uh, maybe you're already a patron. I don't know if you, if you are, you've, I don't know why you're watching this. You could just go watch it the, without this intro or, or anything in the, um, um, you know, behind the paywall. But, um, you know, if you are a patron already, you can always upgrade to that annual plan. Uh, save yourself a little money in that long run. Um, you know, I, I don't know about, uh, I, I've, I've gone on here and I've tried to do every sales pitch under the sun to get you guys to join the Patreon. And I know there's people out there who are just never going to do it, but I really don't, I don't really don't get why. Cause I mean, like you keep turning up here, you keep watching these episodes, you keep turning up when we do onion nuggets on Wednesday, you know, those tend to do pretty well. We usually get about 30,000 people watching those. Um, and our Monday episodes, you know, they're not quite as, as successful as the onion nuggets, but you know, usually 10, 15, sometimes 20,000 people watching those. And, you know, so obviously there's a lot of people out there that enjoy this content. And I don't see why you wouldn't want to at least hop over the other side of that wall and take a look at what's, what's back there. Because there's a ton of stuff. I mean, literal like hours and hours, weeks and weeks of content at this point. We've been doing this a long time and we're very prodigious content creators. So there's a lot of stuff back there. And, uh, you know, um, there's more all the time like exclusive shows every Friday, all kinds of stuff. I don't feel like going through every little thing we do, but there's a lot of stuff back there. You just trust me on that. A ton. Uh, one thing that I do, I'm going to be doing very soon, by the way, is I do a show called Abandon Hope, uh, and that's going to be uh, coming up really soon, and we got a Fighting Boys coming up pretty soon. I think Scotty and I have actually are actually going to combine the Fighting uh, Boys and the Abandon Hope. I'm thinking he'll probably maybe... Uh, well, I was thinking, actually, maybe we'll do like a really long show where uh, maybe we'll, Scotty will do like an exclusive, like, you're wrong. And then I'll join him and we'll do some fighting boys and then he'll leave and I'll do some abandoned hope. Give you guys like a really long stream. And I, I'm not promising that we're going to do it that way because I haven't discussed it with him. He might not agree. But I think that'd be a pretty cool thing. So there's like maybe a big show coming up. But at the very least, I know we're combining fighting boys and abandoned hope into one, you know, big show. Um, or maybe we'll just do them back to back. I'm not exactly sure, but there's going to be some pretty cool shows coming up um, uh, on the Patreon as well. So yeah, I mean, uh, just click on that link below, join that Patreon, see what it's all about. You know, pop in there um, and just kind of see if you like it. And I think a lot of you guys will be uh, pretty pleasantly surprised with all of the, the the sheer glut of content you get back there, all the cool stuff you can see. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I appreciate it. We all appreciate it, uh, a lot. So, um, yeah, you know, that's about as much as I could really say about it, but, uh, here, without further ado, here is the, uh, presentation of the classic deep fat fried vault episode, the death penalty. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it and uh, we'll see you very, 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 very soon on the other side of that old Patreon paywall. 
At least I hope we will. Hope to see you there. If you, uh, if you do join it, drop me a line. Let me know. Uh-huh. What is this? Where's my fucking picture, you stupid sack of shit? There it is. <sighs> I love when I have to reset shit. <clears throat> For the worst criminals and transgressors, there is only one punishment worthy of their horrible, hideous, evil crimes. Death! 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 The sentence is... Kill death. them! Death. Fry them! Deep, fat, fry them! <laughs> Deep, fat, fry them! Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, it's a magical day in America, everybody. You have a spleen? It's a... What? You said, you said you're fucking... It's a magical day. <coughs> I said you have a spleen? I have a spleen? This man has a spleen! We have an announcement, and I think people are probably already seeing what that announcement is. Um, so those of you that have been pumped... To hear the big news that we've been pimping the last couple of shows and stuff. Oh, it's going to be great. You guys are going to love it. I, I mean, mean you already, once, it's already yeah, apparent. It's already right in front of your eyes. We got new lighting for me and Scotty. Yeah! New lights. So we're New looking lights. I mean, I Scotty, you look a little better. overexposed. I think us, maybe. I thought we were going to announce Paul's faggotry. We're going to adjust it. What's that? I thought we were going to announce Paul's faggotry. I announced that with my presence every moment yeah, that I'm I mean, alive. We, we, yeah, we but I thought you were going to make... I thought, I thought that was going to be an official yeah, announcement yeah, just, to, just to end all rumors, end all speculation. I mean, people love it. Just kidding. Uh, we didn't get new lights. We are, however... Going to be doing the first. Hold on. Well, no, okay. Okay. Hold on. Drum Paul. roll. All right. This is about the new lights, Paul. Quit fucking with them. Quit fucking with the people, man. You quit fucking with them, quit TJ. Quit fucking with the people, Paul. Give the people the announcement they came for, TJ. Let them know the be truth. Be a harbinger of joy, TJ. You do it. Why don't you do it? Put Senor Tomat no. back up and let him it's do the, it. You want Senor Tomat? Senor Tomat will we'll do the announcement. We are the children of Tomat. Hola. Um, Tis I once again with a special announcement for everybody who is a fan of the Papat Rider. I, Senor Tomat, am here to tell you that the first annual Deep Fat Fried Meetup will be happening in Los Angeles in the month of late July. You will hear soon where you can get tickets to see the most mind-blowing stage show that you've ever seen. Marshall Manson will be the opening act. And then the fellows of Deep Fat Fried, myself included, will come on to give you a stage show that will liquefy your balls in the sack. Do I need to say more? Must I continue to jabber on? No. Prepare yourself. Wow. Wow. Wow, dude. Wow. <coughs> Amazing news, dude. Amazing. I didn't even know that. Tremendous news. <laughs> we are we were going to that. Los Angeles, boys. <laughs> yep. Going to LA. It's going to be a fucking rock and roll concert. Marshall Manson is going to melt everybody's fucking faces. Melt their brains, too. Salty melt their brains in their skull. Skull fuck them to death. I mean, then we're going to do a live deep fat fried in front of the people. Involving the people directly. Yes. Oh, yes. And audience then, participation. We're not going to do like normal fucking entertainers and rock stars do when the show's over, disappear into our limos and go to the after party that nobody's invited to. No. Everybody that comes is invited to the after party because it takes place right there. We're just going to come down off stage and get drunk and hang out with people. There will be night. food. There will they be kick drink. us out of this shit. There will be merchandise. There will be entertainment. There will be everything that you've ever desired. Be DJ spectacles. will be distributing hand jobs in the men's room Whoa. all night long. Double fisting. Yeah! It's going to be fucking amazing, dude. You It'll can't even comprehend the true form of a DFF meetup. You can't even fucking compre motherfucking hand, bitch. So the tickets will be on sale soon, and we should More have More announcements the to follow. Clear your calendars in late July. 
It will be in July. It will be in LA. It will be an amazing spectacle. 21 and up. Yes, I think so. 21 and up. Because it's going to be drinky. Drinky all day, all night. We gonna drink, we gonna smoke, we gonna party like motherfucking 1986, bitch. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah. So that's gonna be happening soon. Further announcements to follow as specific details are made available to us. They will be made available to you. And there are other big unrelated announcements on the near horizon. Oh yeah, we got more announcements. I mean, you guys, you, like the show is going through the metamorphosis of freshness. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. So tonight we're here to talk about killing people for justice. Capital yes. punishment, the death yeah. penalty. Murder people by the state. Why can't the state just murder you, TJ? I don't know. The state has found you to be obsolete. Maybe they will. You never know. Cool. You never know what the state will do. You know who's fucking found you to be obsolete, TJ? Thanos, bitch. Oh, shit. Bye, how bye. Did I, I how did I not even notice that shirt? That's a dope fucking shirt. <laughs> God damn. Scotty is all stars now. Scotty's on the dope shirt tonight. Scotty's Legit swagging. Legit made me jealous about a shirt. <laughs> Scotty Swaggin. Scotty Dildo not Swaggin's not up fucking in here. Playing. Well, this seemed like the appropriate shirt for an episode about something to do with death. It won't, sure. So you guys want to get into the uh, the topic of the night? I think we should. Or uh, you want to just bullshit all night? We can just bullshit. We can just bullshit The bullshit night. episode. I mean, you know, Paul did a lot of research. Scotty did some research. I didn't do any research. You just, you just showed up. I didn't do. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't did not. That's I like actually, almost every well, episode, you know, TJ. I actually had defense. some stuff that I wanted to pull, but Paul pulled so fucking much that I was like, "Well, I get." I Be your own point. man, TJ. Just because Paul did some, you can't fucking. Maybe there's some you would have pulled that Paul never would have thought. I mean, of. you wouldn't. I mean, like the amount of tabs on this browser window open is. I mean, there's a lot crazy. of shit to talk about here, and I found that when I went looking, yeah, that the things that really got me was the, just a long list of shit that we've done to kill people. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, and, yeah. Uh, there's no way we could spend two shows just covering, like, how people have been executed in the past. So I tried to pick some of the biggest, most widespread ones going all the way back to the beginning. Um, fucking ancient human history, dude. Going so back to where it fucking started. Doing, you know, um, the cradle of civilization. But yeah, in TJ's defense, he couldn't pull anything because he was busy breaking his fucking microphone. Did you pull uh, like yeah. the 2001 Space Odyssey, taking the fucking bone and dun, dun, dun? Uh, no, I should have, though, because that was no. probably the first death penalty. Uh, so for those of you out there too yeah. stupid to know what the death penalty is, here's just a real brief description. Uh, capital punishment, also known as the death penalty, is a government-sanctioned practice whereby a person is put to death by the state as a punishment for a crime. The sentence that someone be punished in such a manner is referred to as a death sentence, whereas the act of carrying out the sentence is known as an execution. Crimes that are punishable by death are known as capital crimes or capital offenses, and they commonly include offenses such as murder, treason, espionage, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. Etymologically, the term capital means of the head. It's derived from Latin capitilis, um, from caput head. In the context alluded to, it's they're basically talking about beheading people, yeah. Uh, but not beheading in the sense of giving them a blowjob, like I discussed in my video. Beheading is in chopping off their fucking head. Right. Uh, Fifty-six countries retain capital punishment. One hundred and three countries have completely abolished it. Pussies. Uh, for all crimes, and six have abolished it for ordinary crimes while maintaining it for special circumstances such as war crimes. And uh, 30 are abolitionist in practice. I don't know what that means. I guess that means de they, they still technically have the right to yeah, do the death penalty. They, they just they don't do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty crazy. It, I, I would have thought that the number of countries that do it would have outnumbered the ones that don't. Nope. But actually, most it's, countries it's, are kind of like, no, nah, we don't want to. Most countries. We don't want the state executing people. Yeah. Well, because there's so many fucking giant glaring problems with it that I'm sure we'll get to tonight. Um, it, it, it's kind of a shameful thing that other countries like the United States haven't come to the same kind of conclusion that maybe this ain't the best way to go about things. But we'll talk about that, as I guess, as we go. Yeah. When it comes to being killed for a transgression, 
I mean, certainly the first instance of that predates humans. I mean, we see our, you know, distant cousins, chimps and shit doing shit like that, where somebody fucks up, oh, they yeah. get beaten to death by the troop. But we're talking about justice here. We're talking about there being an established code of law, and the state itself is the one that's prosecuting it. Yeah, the right? state carries right. out the execution. And that the started with <laughs> Hammurabi. And the code of Hammurabi, right? Well, it says that uh, there's some ancient laws of China sure. that actually predate the the code of Hammurabi, uh, but um, that is a very early example of de- the death penalty. It was the 18th century BC, so we're Which talking is, like yeah. 4,000 years ago, basically. Right. Um, Hammurabi of Babylon. <laughs> yeah, Babylon. <laughs> Sounds like a good YouTube channel. I've name, seen by the the, the, the kind of like tablets, uh, the, these words, cylindrical tablets. They write yeah, the shit on too. Didn't you it's, actually see the some of the code of Hammurabi? Yeah, Scotty? I did like at the museum. I, I pulled a picture of it yep. as well. We can. It's yeah, cool. We yeah, got yeah it's definitely cool to look section. at. You can kind of look. I at got a picture here of what how it looks people like. used to write because it pre- uh, predates the Phoenician alphabet. Yeah, this it's is really how, this is what it looks like. Um, it actually. Prescribed the death penalty for uh, 25 different crimes, but murder was not one of yeah, them. Yeah, I, th- I thought that was interesting. Murder was not included as something punishable for the death penalty. Just- the, uh, the first death sentence historically recorded occurred in uh, 16th century B.C. Egypt, where the wrongdoer, a member of nobility, was accused of magic <laughs> yeah, you in order to take powers. his own life. You see where the priorities of our ancestors were. Murder and eh. witchcraft, though. Uh uh-uh. uh. Did some magic kill him? Well, because is this your card? Ah, oh, sorcerer. Because well, a lot of stuff was tribal, so it was a blood feud. So you could actually give someone up or pay people money and say, "Oh, I killed your sons, but I'm going to give you a bunch of gold and sheep and some other bullshit." You know what I mean? Uh, in the 14th century BC, there was also the Hittite Code, which also prescribed the death penalty. Uh, the 7th century BC Draconian Code of Athens made the death penalty. Uh, for every crime committed, yeah, Whoa. That, that which is the origin of, of dr- draconian laws. When someone right. says something is draconian, that's the basis. Yeah, so basically, you know, anything you broke the law, you die. And the thinking behind that was, if you make a severe punishment standard, then people will just stop breaking the law. Doesn't really work. It doesn't, doesn't work, work that way, but <laughs> doesn't actually work. Interestingly enough, um, I was, actually pulled um, an article that has some of the code of Hammurabi, tra- like translated so that we cool. can read some All of right. the crimes. Yeah, let's take a look. I think I can pull it up. Um, kind of getting out of order here, but that's okay. Oh, there's um, other ones before that? Uh, we were, yeah, there was a... Because both you and Scotty pulled some oh, stuff, okay. they kind of had to be amalgamed together gotcha. a little bit. Yeah. But um, but that's okay. We can get to the, the Middle Ages, uh, which is one of the first things Scotty pulled, comes after the Code of Hammurabi anyway, so... Yeah, far after. Let's just take a look at some of, uh, some of this code. Um... So here's some of the laws. Uh, slander. If anyone point the finger at a sister of a god or the wife of anyone and cannot prove it, this man shall be taken before the judges and his brow shall be marked by cutting the skin or perhaps hair. So this wasn't even death. No, it was just slander, you know, whatever. Trade, okay. If a herdsman to whose cattle or sheep have been entrusted be guilty of fraud or makes false returns of the natural increase or sell them for money, then shall he be convicted and pay the owner ten times the Damn, loss. Damn, dude. That's pretty fucking hardcore there. I mean, you know, whatever. It's a t- it's tough, but it's fair. <laughs> now here's, uh, a, here's one that actually does incur a death sentence. The next one? Yep. yep. If anyone take a male or female slave of the court or a, fe- a male or female slave of a freed man outside the city gates, he shall be put to death. Don't take him outside the city. Yeah, so taking my slaves, man. They were real protective of that. Don't steal my slaves. Um, the duties of workers. If anyone take over a field to till it and obtain no harvest therefrom, it must be proved that he did no work on the field and he must deliver grain just as his neighbor raised to the owner of the field. All right, whatever. Uh, this is theft. If anyone is committing a robbery and is caught, then he shall be put to death. That's pretty straightforward. So yeah, caught, you know, I mean, you were caught stealing shit, you die. Yep. You got caught stealing, you're dead. You die. Scroll down, and it says one of the best known laws from uh, Hammurabi's code. Uh, if a man destroy the eye of another man, then sh- they shall destroy his eye. If one man breaks a man's bone, they shall break his bone. If one destroy the eye of a free man or break the bone of a free man, he shall pay one gold mina. 
If one destroy the eye of a man's slave or break a bone of a man's slave, he shall pay one half his price. Damn. So, that so was you got to pay, like ha- the you gotta pay eye half for the eye, tooth dude. For a tooth. You got to pay half the price of a slave if you uh, fuck a slave up. Hammurabi had many other punishments as well. If a son strikes his father, his hand shall be hewn off. Translations vary. Damn. <laughs> fuck, dude. So pretty harsh. Oh, what's what's the adultery one? If the wife of a man has been caught lying with another man, they shall bind them and throw them that's, into the that's water. Death. That's death. If the owner of the wife uh, would save his wife, then in turn the king could save his servant. Okay. So Hammurabi was a pretty hardcore son of a bitch, you know. Yes. But uh, I guess uh, you know you, you, they do credit him for bringing law and order to a, you know in, into a codified sort of code because prior to that it was just kind of like you know regional and by word of mouth. And whatever the you know nobility you know, of the whatever area. the mob or the nobles or whatever yeah whoever was in charge was the justice was was what happened yeah so he actually brought laws into a, a, a system that was codified and written down and conceivably understandable to people. Um, Seems like a lot of his laws were a little bit harsh, but, you know, whatever. It's ancient times. People were uh, were a little different back then. Um, so we got this Middle Age uh, execution. This is execution of Middle Ages. It goes through a few of the methods, which we're going to get way deeper into detail of, but this is maybe a good little overview for some of these executions, and some of them are not even addressed. But we're going to go deeper into some of these. Um, so... These are the most common types of a medieval execution. So beheading, which uh, they say, believe it or not, beheading was deemed as one of the most honorable and least painful ways to be executed in the Middle Ages. I mean, yeah. It really was. Sharp enough it, axe was used. Is. When you when you see the other re, uh, de, you know death sentences, you'll understand why. Well, yeah. <laughs> if a sharp enough axe was used, a person could be decapitated with one swift blow, allowing for an instantaneous death. Well, not necessarily, because there's actually some evidence that the you know you retain consciousness for a little while. Yeah, I but, pulled uh, some stuff about that. Because of this, beheading was often reserved for nobles, knights, and even royalty. So here's some of the more common ones that weren't for the more. One, you know, one thing to keep in mind too is you, this was all usually done in front of a fucking crowd. Yeah, this was a pal- public spectacle. Also, also, what you skipped over too is that basically prisoners had no rights. It was like you're you're guilty. Basically, you've basically been found guilty automatically, and you're going to be killed. And it's just now yeah, they're going to prescribe the way you're going to be Go killed. figure due process wasn't a fucking thing. No, not uh, really. <laughs> hung, strung, and quartered, perhaps the most brutal of all execution methods, um, traditionally given to anyone found guilty of high treason. The culprit would be hung and just seconds before death released, then disemboweled, and their organs were thrown into a fire, oh, almost dude. still alive. Once dead... They would be cut into four pieces and traditionally have their body parts sent to four parts of the city as a public warning to others. Just let you know, don't commit high treason. Burned at the stake. That's a fun one. Common execution, often given to people believed to be heretics or witches. Uh, they, you know, I mean, we know what burning at the stake is. You're strapped to a wooden I mean, a stake and you're lit on fire. Kind of self-explanatory. Crushing. Crushing. Whoa, That's dude. That's kind of neat. Used both as torture and for execution, medieval crushing involved placing the accused head in a device that slowly crushed the top and sides of their head together. Eventually, their eyes would pop out, skull would crack, and the neck would break. That sounds not fun. Wonderful. Boiling to death. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, wow. Boiling to death was usually reserved for poisoners, coin forgers, and counterfeiters. That's kind of a... Weird okay, grouping. I, mean, like, I, I get poisoners a little, but coin forgers and counterfeiters. Okay, this a little seems a little harsh. It involved being flung into a cauldron of boiling water or oil, and the accused would slowly scald to death. That seems kind of mean. I don't know. You kind of get cooked, dude. Uh, impalement, as the name suggests, medieval impalement meant to be impaled or stuck through. A large, sharp object such as a metal spear or pole, and left to die. I mean, if we're gonna be, if we're gonna go through each one of these, because I pulled stuff for all of them, why don't you just go through them all? Because it's like we're doing it once, and then we're gonna do it again. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I figure this is just giving that little overview of the things we're gonna talk about, because we got obviously that we have. W- there's way more description there. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, hanging, everyone knows what hanging is. Yeah. That's just basically they put a rope around your neck and hang you till you die. Yeah. 
suffer you know you or the, a lot of times or it's about breaking your neck yeah you break too. your neck and die but yeah uh the wheel involved victims limbs gradually being broken while strapped to a wheel and then left to die sawing which is <laughs> they're hung upside down and sawed in half basically uh and crucifixion which that's so ingrained in our culture due to Christianity that I don't think I need to explain that to anybody. It's actually a pretty complex way to die, though. It's yeah. not just exposure like a lot of people think it is. Uh, I um, think it, con- it constricts your chest and all kinds of stuff, Constricts your right? breathing. It rearranges your internal organs in a way that makes them not function properly. It causes fluid to build up in parts of your body where it shouldn't be um, because big abscesses where your organs should be are there. It's just a horrible fucking way to die. Let's take a closer look at some of these execution methods. We're going to start with death by boiling. This one has got to be one of the worst ways. Oh, dude. Because, I mean, you're going to just be in agony for minutes. Shouldn't have forged those coins. Shouldn't have forged those coins. And it's not just the... I mean, that was in medieval times. This is a very old method of punishment. Um, I, I think I pulled a picture of a Japanese man being boiled alive. Yeah, this is kind of a... F- well, you know, you should have thought about that before you did some fucked up shit, Paul. Yeah, this was, uh, I this think, is a traitor. A, this is a, a Japanese dude. He's holding a woman. I don't know what that's about. Um, and he's, uh, you know, boiling. He doesn't look too happy. He looks like he's taking it better than, than most people would, though. Trying to hold her up, trying to survive as long as you can. Then I guess she boils alive with him. Maybe just toss her away so she doesn't. Probably, fall probably. Down. You know, maybe she's tied to him, dude. Yeah, I think he. Uh, re- in reading about this, he was a partisan and a traitor. So this was his. His he and his wife were thrown into the boiling water, and he's trying to save right. her. Right. For as long he's as he's trying he can. to hold her up, uh, you know, away from the boiling. But of course, eventually he's going to die, and she goes in as well. Damn, brutal. Death by boiling. Boiled in, in, in soup of her own husband. Uh, that's a method of execution in which a person is killed by being immersed in a boiling liquid. No shit. Uh, while not as common as other methods of execution, boiling to death has been used in many parts of Europe and Asia. Executions of this type were carried out using a large vessel such as a cauldron or a sealed kettle. It was filled with liquids such as water, oil, tar, or tallow. What the fuck is Tallow. Like, it's it just rendered fat. Oh, okay. So it would just turn into boiling oil. Oh Sometimes they use a hook dude. and pulley system. So nope. they, would, they would lower them into do, 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 it slowly. Do, do, do. Fuck, man. Not Can you fun. imagine that? Looking down at some boiling fucking cauldron, dude, and be like, fuck, they might be boiled alive. Man, that is... Imagine it was your head, too. Like, your feet, you could at least be like, oh, this is going to hurt. But your head, imagine just like the... Ugh. I mean, well, think about, like, if they started with your feet and just boiled them for a few minutes, then lowered your legs in, boiled that for a few minutes. I mean, like, that'd be horrible. Like, you'd just die. I mean, like, because you, you wouldn't die from those injuries until your, like, internal organs started oh, to be yeah, infected. Oh, yeah, dude. So. Fuck, dude. So they said in England in the ninth, ninth Statute passed in 1531, which was during the reign of um, Henry VIII, um, made boiling the prescriptive form of capital punishment for murder committed by poisoning. This was after... Um, the Bishop of Rochester's cook, Richard Roos, gave several people poisoned porridge, resulting in two deaths in February of 1530. No, no, no. Got himself boiled in some Come porridge, on, Dick. Probably. He was uh, tortured, and he they tortured a confession out of him, and then he was uh, sentenced. Uh, here's a chronicle of what he went through uh, by a witness as he was being boiled. He roared mighty loud, and oh, no divers women who were... Big with child, did feel sick at the sight of what they saw and were carried away half dead. And the other men and women did not seem frightened by the boiling alive, but would prefer to see a headsman at his work. So they're just kind of like, yeah, I'd rather just, I'd rather just see, see this dude. Yeah, head, honestly, the, honestly what they're saying is for the time, like, it's even gruesome by our standards. I mean, they, well, they were saying that, like, pregnant women found it hard to look at, but everybody else was pretty much just like, all right, all right whatever. Well, I'd know. rather be saying a beheading. I mean, it just kind of shows you how brutal those times were and how much brutality people well, were using. I think there they wanted a... that. I think they wanted the, you know, they wanted to see the blood, dude. They wanted that fucking bam, you're fucking dead. But, yeah, he, he, like, yeah they, they, but like you said, he was, that was kind of reserved for the nobility and royalty and shit. And that this guy was a cook, so I doubt he was any of that. So he probably would have just been drawn and quartered or some shit. Uh, in 1542, there was a woman named Margaret Davy who also was a poisoner. 
Um, she was boiled alive as well. In a, well, that's in a accused poisoner, because in yeah. both of these cases, a, a confession was tortured out of the person. <laughs> well, so yeah, I mean, we all know how reliable these those people types didn't. Are. These people didn't get anything like a fair trial. No. So. Fuck no, dude. It was you're accused, you're tortured, and you confess. Uh, in 1547, the act was repealed. So I guess even they were kind of like, eh, this boiling people alive thing is a little. Eh, I'm not too sure about this one. Let's just let's just keep chopping their heads. Let's off. just cut their heads off. Seems more reasonable. So uh, in Asia, this is the sto- backstory, I guess, for the picture we were looking at okay. earlier. 16th century Japan, a semi- semi-legendary Japanese bandit. Oh, he's a bandit. Cool. Ishikawa Goman was boiled alive in a large iron kettle-shaped bathtub. His public execution, which might have included his entire family, was done after he failed to kill warlord Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Uh, it, uh, okay, so in... 1675, a Sikh martyr. This is a different story called yeah. Ba ba da- Dayala yeah. was boiled alive in Delhi after he refused to accept Islam. Uh, that still happens. <laughs> he was put into a cauldron full of cold water, which was then heated to boiling point. That seems better than being just dropped right into the boiling. Yeah, no, yeah. not for me. I mean, like honestly, dude, think about that. You'd ha- you'd have time to sit there and feel it get warmer and warmer and warmer. I mean, like it's the slow death. Yeah, dude. but you get to adjust a little, you know. <laughs> it's like they talk about the frog and the. There ain't no adjusting. Water, you, know? you get to adjust, water. DJ. So it's like I can tolerate this. It's kind of getting warm. Ah, buried alive! You know, just it's just getting hotter and hotter until it's like just boiling. Your skin is just melting off of you. Better than this is being thrown right in the boiling water. You think it'd be quicker to die that way because the damage is done. Yeah, yeah, quicker. Yeah, Yeah. I'm I'm all about quicker when it comes to this type of painful shit. I don't want to sit there and slowly let the water (laughs) fucking heat up. (laughs) Fuck that. I mean, it's just another moment. You really fucking. So you would you would choose the slow one. I mean, it's not really that much slower. Yes, it is because you have to wait. For yeah, it's gonna take like. Yeah, you gotta wait. It's a huge. Big old yeah, you're gonna have to up. wait anyway. You might no, as well give no. yourself a chance to adjust a little. You're, <laughs> what? Yeah. Dude, pro- you, if you're lower then you probably have like a couple minutes, and then you're dead. Right, but it's you're gonna sit in that cauldron for 45 minutes the other way, right. at least. I mean, it's, it's gonna take a long ass time for, for that a big ass fucking pot of water to boil, dude. Oh yeah, for a cauldron to boil, it's gonna take a long ass time. I don't know, man. You're crazy. Depictions in Western culture, uh, the early reports of cannibals from islands uh, in the Pacific, such as Fiji and Papua New Guinea, killing Western Christian missionaries were assumed to involve some form of boiling alive. Uh, This became a fertile ground for filmmakers and especially cartoonists whose cliched depictions of tourists and missionaries sitting restrained in a large cauldron above a wood fire and surrounded by bone-nosed tribesmen was a staple of popular magazines and films for decades. We've all seen the cartoons. Yeah, they were always tied up in there and then like they'd be cutting up potatoes and carrots in there with them and shit. Yeah, and there'd be like some kind of witty quip or caption down at the bottom. Uh, So... Yeah, it's pretty fucking crazy. This is um, th- th- there's actually a modern times section of this too. Wow. The government of Uzbekistan under Islam Karimov has been alleged to have boiled suspected terrorists in a 2004 documentary from the U.S. or sorry, document from the U.S. Department of State. The following is written: During the year, there were no developments or investigations in the following 2002 deaths in custody. Um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce these two names. They're really complicated Muslim-sounding names. Uh, they were members of hizb u tahrir who were tortured to death in uh, Yasilisk prison in Karakap... Yeah, whatever. Resulting in extensive bur- bruises and burns, the latter reportedly caused by immersion in boiling water. Wow. So neat. Still being used. Still happening. Still happening. At least in Islamic countries, it's still happening a little bit. Cool. So uh, that's, that's good raci- to know. You're fucking racist, TJ. What? You're racist, dude. I'm racist because I talked yeah. about that. Islamic countries, dude. Before you had to point out that it's happening in Islamic countries. So, Paul, uh, we were, you were talking a little bit earlier about uh, how people die in a crucifixion. Obviously, people understand a lot about crucifixion. Yeah. Yeah, you get nailed to a fucking cross, dude. But here's doesn't, how it doesn't feel good. Here's how you actually die when you're on the cross. Uh, the length of time required to reach death. Let me see if I have a picture of a crucifixion here. We can pull up. Yeah, we do. I'm going to go ahead and put this up here. Why don't you pull up our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Oh, no, this isn't it. Yeah, that's him. That's oh, it, him. oh, it is there Jesus. He is. Oh, there, yeah, there he is. 
it in there. Oh, thank God. The dude. length of time required to reach death could range from hours to days, depending on the method, the victim's health, and the environment. A literature review by Maslin and Mitchell identified scholarly support for several possible causes of death. So there's many ways you could die on the cross. Yep. You could die of cardiac rupture, heart failure. Damn, dude. Hypovolemic shock. Acidosis, asphyxia, arrhythmia, and pulmonary embolism. Neat. Death could result from any combination of those factors or from other causes, including sepsis, following infection due to the wounds caused by the nails or the scourging that often preceded crucifixion. You could die of dehydration. You could die of animal predation. So basically like birds and shit coming and pecking you to death. I think Conan had the best answer to that. Um, A theory attributed to Pierre Barbet holds that when the whole body weight was supported by the stretched arms, the typical cause of death was asphyxiation. He wrote that the condemned would have severe difficulty inhaling due to hyperexpansion of the chest, muscles, and lungs. The condemned would therefore have to draw himself up by the arms, leading to exhaustion, or have his feet supported by tying or by a wood block when, he, when no longer able to lift himself. The condemned would die within a few minutes. Some scholars, including Frederick Zugubi, <laughs> funny name, posit other causes of death. Zugubi uh, suspended test subjects with their arms at a 60 to 70 degree angle from the vertical. The test subjects had no difficulty breathing during experiments, but did suffer rapidly increasing pain, which is consistent with the Roman use of crucifixion to achieve a prolonged agonizing death. However, Zagubi's positioning of the test subjects' feet are not supported by any archaeological or, or historical evidence. So he didn't really do it right as far as the support at the bottom. Right. So, um... I mean, I mean like anything else, it's hard to really know what exactly how the method was Obviously, we're not but, going to be like, let's just yeah. crucify someone and let's see how like this kills Let's crucify, like, five them. people five different ways. And let's figure In it out. In that picture that you had up, though, it shows the two poses of somebody trying to get a breath when they're crucified in that right. way. So they hang... Uh, allowing the, their body weight to be supported yeah, by the nails to, in their hands and feet. Like this but go, that constricts their chest to the point where they can't breathe, so they have to do kind of a pull-up to get a breath. I mean, you can just imagine how quickly that would be. Yeah, you'd be dead, yeah. Especially you're when you're pulling yourself up by a giant iron nail through your hand. You know what I mean? Like, just the immense pain involved in doing anything. It's almost like there. choose your death at that point. Right, you suffocate. Know? I mean, nobody can, like, willingly suffocate themselves to death. I mean, like, your natural instincts for survival kick in, and you start looking for a way to breathe. And when the only way to do that is to do another painful-ass pull-up, you do it. Speaking of not breathing, execution by drowning... Uh, drowning as a method of execution is attested very early in human history for a large variety of cultures. So a bunch of different human cultures all got the same bright idea. Let's drown people. Let's yeah. Drown like, them. You put, you put someone in a sack and throw them in the fucking river, dude. And it's kind of interesting. It says here in a variety of cultures, there was taboos against shedding the blood of royals, you know? Mm-hmm. And in many cultures, when the execution of a king uh, or members of royal family was thought necessary, they were drowned to avoid spilling their blood. In Cambodia, for example, drowning was the type of execution uh, reserved for members of the royal family. Um, Here's a guy named Felix Carey describing it in 1806. Uh, When a person of royal extraction is to receive capital punishment, it is generally done by drowning. In the first place, that person is tied, hands and feet, then sewn up in a red bag, which again is sometimes put into a jar, and thus the prisoner is lowered into the water with a weight sufficient to sink him. This practice is resorted to because it is reckoned a sin to spill royal blood. (laughs) Damn. So it's kind of taboo to spill the blood of the royals, so they just... I, I'd rather ha- be beheaded and spill my blood. Yeah, no, no lie, yeah, dude. chop my fucking head off. I don't no, want to drown. You'll be, you'll be drowned. Well, that's better. Uh, African cultures used it. Islamic cultures used it. Eastern Asian cultures used it. Um, 
says here uh, a strange case of revoking the penalty of drowning for a woman who had killed her child occurred in Nuremberg in 1525. The executioner said he was willing to marry Gertrude Butner if her life was spared and authorities granted her reprieve. So wait. What? Wow, the executioner <laughs> fell in love with her. He's, He's like, like, damn, I want to I bone this chick, yeah. dude. He's like, man, this bitch is fine. Yeah. Hey, guys. I'm willing to marry this bitch if you don't. I mean, like, if I don't have to kill her, could I just marry her? And they're like, "Ah, you've always been a good executioner, sure." Yeah. Fair enough. Go. You've for never it. really complained. We'll 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 give this to you. Maybe he was just a dude that never wanted kids. He was like, "Dude, this is the perfect woman for me. She'll just kill the any kids that come along." <laughs> great, great deal, Fuck, dude. Uh, dissolution of the practice, I guess, uh, in Europe, some cases regarded as the last instances of drowning occurred during the latter half of the 16th century. Uh, the reported cases in Esslington and Wurtemberg, for example, occurred in 1589 and 1593, respectively. So... You know, we stopped using it in the 16th century. Uh, as, not, in not Western culture, anyway. Yeah, Western culture did. Um, there's, there's actually a very recent example of this being used. Still, I pulled a picture of it. It says in Russia, it was like a, more like the 18th century. Uh, but yeah, Paul actually did pull an interesting picture. Guess who's still executing people by this method? I don't know. Hmm. hmm. I wonder, dude. Ah. Uh. Huh. So yeah. hmm. this might come as a shock, but this is uh, an ex- uh, a screenshot from an ISIS video that what? was released. I know. Involving I the can't cage. believe ISIS would do I that. Thought, I thought this was a video of some people in Norway or some dude. No, no. This is definitely ISIS using a big cage lowered by a crane into the water to drown men. So, yep, still happening. People still being put to death in this way in parts of the world. Um... I had a hard time finding the video that this came from. I wanted to verify it, so this might be fake news. Fake news. Fake news. But it doesn't look ISIS, like fake news. I, I know mean, ISIS, and ISIS, ISIS always, would never do that. Dude, ISIS has always been known for their generosity and benevolence. They're so just, I, yeah, I they're mean, just, look, they're just deep sea diving, and that sh- cage is to protect them from sharks. Yeah, and they just don't have any diving equipment on <laughs> because they're skin divers. They're yeah. breath divers. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Well, they, they're going to lift them up plenty of times. Yeah. They go down for a minute, they lift them back up, they'll be fine. Down, up, down, up, down, up, you know. It's, it's you know. You know just, if, they, if, they, if they did die, it's, it's like a ride. It's like a ride. The crane probably got stuck on the down, and it was probably like, oh, lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Couldn't do it. They died. So here's another method of execution that I know is being used by ISIS. Uh, falling. Oh, or shit. Being thrown really, th- yeah, being thrown off a fucking big high thing, you yep. know. Like a cliff or a... Tossed yeah. off a, really a building, tossed building. off a, you know, a cliff... You know, whatever, tossed off something really high up. Throwing or dropping people from great heights has been used as a form of execution since ancient times. People executed in this way die. Well, of, who, of course we know how they die. Obviously. I mean, they're flung off a fucking really I high mean, everyone thing. remembers they smash uh, into the ground. Like the Spartan thing, you know what I mean? They're, they're going to keep the baby or drop the baby like, off the cliff, you know what I mean? Yep. I don't know if that actually ever Yeah, happened, but, we, but we've all heard of the myth, at of least, course. of it. Yeah, there were um, Delphi. There was a trial at Delphi where someone was thrown off. Yeah, some sacrilegious person was hurled from the top of Hyampia. Yep. Should have uh, done it. The high crag of the... Man, this episode has a lot of fucking difficult words. Phaedriads? Uh, to the east of the Castellinian Spring. That's fun. In pre-Roman Sardinia, elderly people who were unable to support themselves were ritually killed. <laughs> there you go. They were That's in- a great example. Hey, pops. Of, you know, society coming can't, up with a creative your- idea to get rid of some, some dead weight. And like, you know what? what? Yeah, they say nursing homes are <laughs> fucked up. The Sardinians know how to fucking deal with old people. Look, yep. look. And here's the thing. Can't walk anymore. They intoxicated them first. They got them. They got them drunk with a neurotoxic plant known as the sardonic herb. Cool. Yeah, I so like some sardonic herb. Yeah, it sounds fun. And then they were dropped from a, a big high rock or beaten to death. You know, <laughs> that's that's awesome. All right, old man, you feeling drunk yet? You feeling fucked up? Well, I feel nothing, man. All right, cool. Boom, boom, boom. You're dead. <laughs> yeah, you're dead now. Next. <laughs> awesome. Uh, during the Roman Republic, the Tarpian Rock. The Tarpian Rock. Tarpian yeah. Rock. A steep, make... cliff, steep cliff uh, at the southern summit of the 
Capitoloni. Capitoline? Ca- no, Capitoline. Capitoline? Yeah. Capitoline Hill uh, was used for public executions. It was mostly for murderers and traitors. Uh, they were flung off, you know, they were just flung off the cliff to their deaths. I mean, you know, that, that's pretty fucking nice for the Romans, you know, like they, you Assuming know. Assuming that it's high enough and that you don't survive Compared to, uh, you know, compared to fucking crucifixion, it seems I'd pretty nice. I'd take death of falling over almost yeah. any of these. I mean, that's, there's a reason why people jump off of high things to kill themselves. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, boom. Yep. Wee. Yeah, it's like a few moments of euphoria as you fall and then <laughs> lights out. Uh, in 2015, members of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant executed men who were accused of being gay by pushing them off of towers. That's the uh, Fair first enough. contemporary thing. You're a faggot. Die. You like dick? Well, let's see you fucking die. Woo. Throw them off a cliff. Throw them off a building. You're a fairy. Well, let's see if you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here's a little video Paul pulled. This is... Uh, called That Time When You Could Save Yourself From Being Executed By Beating the Executioner in a Foot Race. Oh, yeah, this is kind of a funny little... I, I didn't know where to put this, but this well, we'll is kind just, of an interesting We'll use little... it here as a little breakup. Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. That's in the video today. We're looking cool. at that time you could save yourself from being executed by beating the executioner in a foot race. put it up on the screen? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. That's not it. Like many historical nations, the Ottoman Empire was no stranger to doling out deadly Open. justice to criminals and those the rulers disliked. Unlike most, for several decades, starting sometime in the late 18th century, they did offer some of the condemned a chance to avoid being executed. How? Well, they simply had to beat the palace's head gardener in what amounted to a 300-meter dash. In the Sweet. Ottoman Empire, the method Damn, that's pretty cool, eventually dude. came to be that executed seems fair. was directly yeah. related to their standing in society. Right, you society, fucked up? Beat the gardener in a fucking foot race, dude. Sex. For example, commoners who didn't necessarily commit a heinous enough crime to warrant one of the more painful forms of execution favored by the Ottomans, like being inhaled or being hung by a jagged... Inhaled? Still dead. Wait yeah. a minute. What is that? I think he meant to say impaled, but... Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he meant <laughs> but, impaled. But maybe being inhaled... <laughs> The giant nose will see you now. <laughs> Holy shit, man. That's horrible. No! Fuck, dude. You get to fucking drown in boogers. Inhaled. They simply have their heads lopped off. In contrast, higher-ranking individuals such as high-ranking ministers and royalty were often strangled to death by either the executioner's bare hands, the string of a bow, or even a silk handkerchief. Once dead, the body was often cast into the sea. As for the ladies, for certain condemned high-ranking women, their fate tended to be being tied up in weighted sacks and dropped into the sea while still alive. Although nice. being beheaded would arguably be quicker and perhaps a little less emotionally traumatic during the actual event, a bloodless death was seen as being cleaner and more refined, so preferable by the elite. More refined. Numerous executions in the Ottoman Empire, whether they involved commoners or the Sultan's own family, took place in the Topkapi Palace in modern day Istanbul. This opulent residence served as the main home of the Sultan and was re- At least you get to be killed somewhere nice, you know? Yeah, you get to go on a nice little vacation. Well, look, dude, look at that fucking view, dude. I know, beautiful little It's almost worth villa. it. It's almost worth it. Yeah. You're a commoner, you're like, you know what, I want to see the inside of the palace. Do you just fucking you off somebody? Yeah, I mean, it's probably kill the, like, them and then it kind of sucks you. that if you're like a commoner that does some fucked up shit and they bring you to this palace for execution, it's probably the nicest place you've ever been in your life. Well, think about that. Yeah. You, you, you go get killed. You get to kill your fucking biggest arch rival or whatever. You fucking hate the dude across the street. You kill him. They catch you. You get, you get a fucking tour of the palace. You get to fucking see what's what. And they kill you. Yeah. It's a nice little ocean breeze coming off the water there, you know? It's a little just vacation. A, just a pleasant, pleasant way to go with grim reminders of the potential cost of crime or descent, with seven heads of recently killed criminals being on well, display dead, who cares? at the palace's front gate, along with piles of other severed body parts like noses, ears, and tongues. Kind of takes away from the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the vacation sort of... Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you're walking past piles of tongues and eyeballs <laughs> and shit, um, yeah, it's it like, kind yeah. of ruins the idyllic nature of visiting the palace. But that's on the outside. You're going to be inside the palace. Right. You know, so it'll be, it'll be all right. Criminals to be executed on palace grounds were only made aware of their fate on the day they were meant to be executed by yeah, a see, there you go. sweetened drink. I mean, that's kind of better, right? <laughs> You know, you just chill at the yeah, palace, you don't have and it's worry like, about it for yeah. You don't have months. like days and days of dread waiting. It's just like, like, oh man, you know, you wake up and it's like, hey, Paul, we're gonna execute you. Yep, today's your day. You're you're dying today. It's like, all right, well, well, fuck. 
drink made with sherbet. The accused would customarily be presented with this drink three days after appearing in court. The color of the drink would be indicative of the court's decision. As Professor Godfrey Goodwin of Bo That's a weird way to let yeah. someone know. You give them a goblet and it's like, if it's red in there, you're dead. And if it's blue, you're okay, you get to leave. <laughs> yeah, the color of your drink will be how we let you it's know It's like a reality sentence. show they have today. It's like, will you be executed? And oh, Tide reveals, red, he will be executed live in Damn front it. of a live studio audience. Nietzsche University noted, if it were white, he sighed with relief. But if it were red, he was in despair because red oh, is the color of death. Now we're Despite close. the vast number of executions that took place in the Sultan's palace, for reference, during the brief eight-year, 16th century reign of Sultan Selim I alone, he is estimated to have had over 30,000 people executed there. Jesus there was no Christ, that's a lot of people. Well, I mean, he was a dictator, of course. <laughs> job. Instead, the job of carrying out these executions usually fell to one of the palace's so-called gardeners, except when the person was of extreme high standing, in which case the execution would be carried out by the palace's Bostanchi Basha, which roughly translates to head gardener. While you might think that the name for these workers simply came from the fact that they were tasked with pruning off individuals who had been deemed unfit to be members of that society, they also were charged with literal gardening. <laughs> Damn, dude. Wow, what, were... a, what a strange job. The dude that mows your lawn used to have executions as part of his, his duties back in the day. That's crazy. Yeah, so um, we, uh, yeah, trim those hedges, and uh, we're, I'm going to need to kill a couple people later on. All right. Well, they're good at pruning plants. They'll be good at pruning men as well. <laughs> weird. I guess they were. What a weird pick couple of jobs to pair together. You mean, yeah, your job is uh, you maintain the palace grounds, and also you kill people we don't like. Oh, okay. Fair enough. ...and grounds of the palace. Beyond this, they variously functioned as bodyguards, police, and security for the palace as the need arose, with several thousand gardeners on staff at any given so, like, time. So, like, the fucking Secret Service used to also take care of the White <laughs> House grounds? <laughs> Crazy. Neat. Now to the race. While most who were given the red sherbet would simply be killed shortly after by a gardener, particularly high-ranking officials such as Grand Viziers still had a little hope. The head gardener was honor bound to challenge these individuals to a foot race through the gardens to the place of execution near the fish market gate on the southern side of the palace, a distance of around 300 meters. If the person was able to finish the dash before the head gardener, their sentence would be reduced from death to simple banishment. As far as historians can tell from the known documented instances of this, very few people ever managed to defeat the Bastanchi Basher in the race. This is perhaps not surprising, as the race was heavily stacked in the executioner's favor, considering he knew the palace grounds inside out and was more often than not in fantastic shape relative to the victim. All condemned who lost were immediately strangled upon reaching the gate. For those oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what a finish line. <laughs> what a fucking finish line to cross, dude. Oh, yeah, dude, you could tell that. I was, I was going to say there's objections, too. It's like, one, this person's probably not going to know the palace grounds. And two, uh, this guy works outside all the time. So, and it's probably some fat-ass official, you know what yeah, I mean? He's not only the gardener, which involves fucking hard labor all day, but he's the bodyguard as well. So this is not a dude you fuck with, not a dude that's in bad shape, and not a dude you're probably going to win a 300-meter dash against. Just kick him in the knee. <laughs> I don't think you were allowed to. You'd probably kick just him, get strangled. Give him a good quick kick in the knee as you're running. Oh, sorry. Kick That's in a the strangling. Knee. Nope. Hell no. Exception. Well, you know, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Pretty interesting I think we stuff. should reinstitute that shit, dude. Yeah, I think we should do that, but not just for the rich prisoners. I think we should just do that across the board. Yeah. Know? No banishment, though. Just make it life in prison. You know, if you don't want to, if you get the death penalty. I say just go free. You could beat the warden in a foot race. Yeah, if you, I say, you Except know. Except for this country, the fucking warden would be like a former track star, no, dude. dude they, they were even smart enough not to let the people just go free and go about their day. Let they, them go they back. Sent them let out them of the fucking free country. Free them out. Free them up. Yeah, you're banished, dude. Get them no, back into that. society. If they can no. run fast, they deserve to no. be free. No, TJ, wrong. You guys are faggots. So death by burning. Burned at the fucking stake. Heretic, burn them! Another pretty horrible way to go. Burn them! Yeah, motherfucker, burn that motherfucker at the stake! Hell yeah. The fire will cleanse the heresy. So here's a, here's a little picture of it. Um, Let's picture the burning. 
picture the burning motherfuckers. Oh, yeah, let's take a look. I'm burning, burning for you. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning for look you. Look at these fucking heretics. Yeah, look at that son of a bitch. Look at him burn. What a little faggot. Actually, that's what the that's where the word faggot comes from is the the sticks, the kindling and shit, right? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, apropos, deliberately causing death through the effects of combustion or effects uh, of exposure to extreme heat has a long history as a form of capital punishment. Many societies have employed it as an execution method for activities considered criminal, such as treason, rebellious actions by slaves, heresy, witchcraft, and sexual transgressions such as incest or homosexuality. Yeah, yeah, you're burning up with lust for my wife. Let's see how you burn then. I I fucked my father as part of a ritual. And I mean, this is one of the most powerful things. I mean, to give me powers. The, I mean, the, just as a, the human eye is and just then drawn to the, treason to, against the king. It's just drawn to the flames, dude. It's like you it, just imagine like they build up a big ass fucking pyre around this person. He's fucking slowly starting to fucking get hotter and hotter. You know, like this is definitely one of the most painful ways to fucking die. And uh, and you know, a bunch of people gather around and roast yeah! and shit. Uh, The best known type of execution of uh, death by burning is when the condemned is bound to a large wooden stake. This is usually called burning at the stake, or in some cases, auto de fe. Sounds French. Auto de fe. Auto de fe. But other forms of death resulting from exposure to extreme heat are known. For example, pouring substances such as molten metal onto a person, or down their throats or into their ears. Dude, that's the Game of Thrones shit. Yeah. Where uh, fucking, what's his name, says, like, I'm going to make you a crown of gold. <laughs> yeah. He just pours molten gold over his head. I think head. that was based on, uh, what is it, the Roman Crassus, Marcus Crassus, that was, uh, I think they did the same thing. Cause he was supposed to be the richest man in Rome. I think they basically did that to him. They gave him a fucking crown of gold on his head. It's nice stuff. Ouch. I mean, that, that's what they say, or some, something similar to that effect. I mean, this yeah. one has been used all over the place. We'll just, I'll just focus in on a few examples. But yeah, they, lo- they love to burn people. Um, it's a fun time. Hebraic tradition, like the Hebrews. The, the Jews, the Jews did it. Uh, in Genesis 38, Judah orders Tamar, the widow of his son, living in her father's household, to be burned when she is believed to have become pregnant by an extramarital sexual oh, relation. Oh shit, dude! Oops. Tamar saves herself by proving that Judah is himself the father of her child. How did she do that? Was Maury Povich there? Yeah, Um, Maury had a DNA (laughs) evidence. Judah, you are the father. Uh, In the Book of Jubilees, the same story is basically told with some intriguing differences. According to Karen A. Reader, in Genesis, Judah is exercising his patriarchal power at a distance, whereas he and the relatives seem more actively involved in Tamar's impending execution. In Hebraic law, death by burning was prescribed for ten forms of sexual crimes. Uh, the imputed crime of Tamar, namely that of, uh, namely that a married daughter of a priest commits adultery, and nine versions of relationships considered as incestuous, such as having sex with one's own daughter or granddaughter, but also, for example, to have sex with one's mother-in-law or with one's wife's daughter. Okay, so don't fuck your mother-in-law. Don't fuck your. I mean, they thought about this shit because you know it probably happened one time. They're like, shit, what do we do? It's like we burn them, burn them, dude. I love the I love the medieval Maury Povich thing. My brain is just chewing yeah, that dude. shit. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. When it comes to eight-month-old Hezekiah, Judah, thou art the father. Burn him, burn him, burn him live. Uh, let's. Okay, so. Uh, Ritual child sacrifice in Carthage? Damn. Whoa, dude. That's not really the death penalty, though. Um, I mean, it kind of is for the people being burned. Well, but, you know, they're not, they're not being punished for a crime, though. No, I, mean, I know. They're just, but you know. It, 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 in effect, the same result, though. Uh, Eastern Roman Empire. Under 6th century Emperor Justinian I, the death penalty had been decreed for Im- impenitent uh, Mani- Manichians? But a specific punishment was not made explicit. By the 7th century, however, those found guilty of dualist heresy could risk being burned at the stake. Those found guilty of performing magic rites and corrupting sacred objects in the process might face death by burning as evidenced in a 7th century case. Okay. So they like to burn people. 
I'm just picking a few random ones because there's literally. Just, yeah, I mean, it, I this mean, is one of the most common. It's methods across so many old, cultures, across oldest. time and across cultures. The dude. Spanish Spanish Inquisition oh, yeah, used it like a lot. Things. I mean, if you think of this even at a prehistorical context, like wielding fire was one of the first big technological advancements of man, and you gotta imagine it wasn't long after harnessing it that he, you know, used it to punish an enemy. Ooh, let's burn people. <laughs> um. Here's some North American examples. Uh, indigenous North Americans you often use burning as a form of execution against members of other tribes or against white settlers during the 18th and 19th centuries. Ooh, damn. Roasting over a slow fire was a customary method. So Indians like to burn people. That's different, though. Roasting over a low fire is different than being tied to a pole and burned. Well, this is uh, this is just any fucking yeah. heat murder. I'm just basically. saying, like, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't belong on the list. I'm saying it's like... That's way, I think, probably worse, right? Uh, because, like, you got to imagine if you're tied to a stake like the gentleman here, you're probably going to suffocate. I mean, you're going to be in a lot of pain, but eventually you're just not going to be able to get enough oxygen in your lungs. Yeah, you're, you're going to choke go. on the smoke yeah. and shit. Like, if, if you're <laughs> slow roasting over a fire... It's like being you're, cooked to death, basically. Right. You're going to... I mean, man, that's like the slow boil that we talked about. Listen to this. In Massachusetts, there are two known cur- uh, cases of burning at the stake. First, in 1681, a slave named Maria tried to kill her owner by setting his house on fire. She was convicted of arson and burned at the stake in Roxbury. Concurrently, a slave named Jack, convicted in a separate arson case, was hanged at a nearby gallows, and after his death, his body was thrown into the fire with that of Maria. Uh, Second, in 1755, a group of slaves had conspired and killed their owner with uh, servants Mark and Phyllis executed for his murder. Mark was hanged and his body gibbeted, and uh, Phyllis was burned at the stake at Cambridge. So there's been two burning at the stake things in Massachusetts, both for slaves that rose up against their masters. Uh, In New York, several burnings at the stake are recorded, particularly following the suspected slave revolt plots. So So it seemed like a lot lot of this was used to control slaves. Yeah. You know, know, make them afraid. Like, yeah, if you defy us white folk, you're going to burn. Which, I mean, that's a good threat for anybody. (laughs) Nobody wants to burn. Uh, Let's see if there's some, so we can find some good modern examples of this still being used. Um... Understand this. This article is like scary long. Yeah, no, I know. It, it's it's one of the like the most common and documented forms of execution, maybe the most. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, it's still being used in the Middle East, surprisingly. Shock. Yeah, I'm ISIS shocked. has employed it. Several. ISIS has used it several times. Um, yeah, actually, ISIS is ISIS is really what's keeping this one alive. It seems a lot of these. <laughs> Like, you know, ISIS really likes to revisit these 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 old classic the, all these methods goodies, of murdering dude. people. You know, like how can we murder people? Like, you know, we have to go back to the fucking past. We have to like really revive these methods. Like, we could just shoot somebody in the head. <laughs> but is that really is that you really know, demonstrating? On, I love to them? this picture, dude. I love this pic- fucking picture. Look at this one guy, dude. He he looks so sad. He's just kind of like, He's yeah, like, man, all right. This sucks. They're all kind of like chilling. They're like, man, this is kind of lame. Dude, I mean, I love though this this guy off to the side here. Pretty much has the exact same expression as the dude that's literally burning. Yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> they had trouble with emotion and faces back then. Everybody looks like, pretty much nah, the same, nah. except for the other dude burning. He looks like he's screaming and yelling. He's like, whoa. He just kind of looks mildly pissed. Kind of hurts. A lot of people are just kind of watching, like, eh, you know, whatever. Well, yeah. I mean, this looks like a very this like ho like hum ho hum. What is this like the ninth people. century or something? Yeah, I don't know. They all just look bored. Like, Medieval, everyone's just like, definitely. yeah, we're bored. Might as well burn some people. Yeah, this is a... All right, I'm burning. Ooh, okay. Dude, look, they've got um, they've got audio foam back then, too. You see that Whoa. in the background? Yeah, dude. Look at all the sound foam they had. For the screaming. For the screaming. So they that want to the really hear the village the... didn't have to hear it. They padded it all up with audio dampening. That's like, nice of them, It's like man. the precursor to, like, THX sound, dude. Like, yeah. that, 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 what, what do you think, people? That, that shit was invented hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. Hear every so, scream, every whimper, the new THX yeah. stake burning. Every plea for mercy. Only at the Brandenburg Gate. It's like, yes. Dude, I've yes. Seen, I've seen some gay dudes shove some pretty big shit up their ass, but man, this is a little bit this is a little bit much here. Whoa, dude. Oof. You know, this is a little bit much, don't you think? I mean, you know, 
Yes. When it's coming out the other end, you got to say, like, maybe this You've dildo. Gone a far. I mean, and spicy. This dildo too, is dude. a little big. Little bit big. <laughs> a little, uh, little sharp, too. Yeah, you know, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, the thing about this, too, is usually you slid down as well. Like, yep. it, was, it was put up, and you, of course, you, you try to keep yourself up, but of course, you eventually, gravity is going to win, and you're going to slide all the way down. Ugh. So, this is death <laughs> by impalement. That's a fun, that's a fun one. A lot of fun there. Well, everybody's favorite vampire was, you know, you know, Vlad. Vlad. Yeah, Vlad. 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 Yeah, the, so impalement as a method of execution and also torture is the penetration of a human by an object such as a stake, pole, spear, or hook, often by complete or partial perforation of the torso. Uh, it was used particularly in response to crimes against the state and regarded across a number of cultures as a very harsh form of capital punishment. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> and recorded in myth and art, impalement was also used during wartime to suppress rebellion, punish traitors or collaborators, and as a punishment for breaches of military discipline. It was useful because you could leave people there so that the partisans that you didn't kill would come back and find the people that had been captured Stuffed with fucking steaks coming out. Their well, also to think about how from trees by hooks. How inexpensive it is too. I mean, it's like take a sharpened stick and put someone on it. Yep, that's it. Pretty easy to carry you know, around. Bo- boiling somebody that takes a lot of time and effort, hanging them. You have to have rope. You know, this is like basically like go to the fucking forest, sharpen a bunch of sticks, and let, let people to fucking die. So, uh, highway robbers, they often suffered this penalty. Grave robbers, they often suffered it. Violating state policies or monopolies or subverting standards for trade. Damn, dudes. Uh, Offenders have also been impaled for a variety of cultural, sexual, and religious reasons. References to impalement in uh, Babylonia and the Neo-Assyrian Empire are found as early as the 18th century BC. Within the Ottoman Empire, this form of execution continued into the 20th century. That's not too long ago. (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty crazy. In the um, 1800s. I, I think I pulled another picture of a dude getting a uh, hook impaled, which is a different kind of... Oh, that's not fun. Impaled. So, Ooh, yeah. Ooh, dude, fuck. Hooked and hung right under the rib cage through and your once torso. Again, looks kind of nonplussed by the whole thing, you know? He's probably dead. No, he looks He looks like he's still alive to me. Plus, look at Dan and see the fucking the last guy. That I think got he fucking just don't give a fuck, dude. People impaled. were tougher back then. People were just like, yeah, I guess I'm dying. Yep. What ebbs? What the fuck? You can see the other skulls in the background too. It's like these are the other motherfuckers that fucking broke the law. I mean, with this much damage too, you'd probably be in shock if you were still. Alive. Oh yeah, this person. Would be, oh, they they would just be in agony. That's true. Um, probably get a little bit of an endorphin rush. Uh, that's this is called hanging by the ribs. A slightly variant way of executing people by means of impalement was to force an iron meat hook beneath a person's ribs and hang them up to die slowly. This technique was uh, is used in the 18th century Ottoman-controlled Bosnia, uh, but the practice is also attested, for example, in 1770s Dutch Suriname uh, as a punishment meted out to rebellious slaves. So more slave punishment. This this one looks just particular. I mean. Any any form of impalement is particularly nasty. If you're being lowered on a pole, starting with your God, asshole, yeah. and slowly dragged down over it, I mean, you'd you'd die before it came out your fucking mouth, but you'd be in agony. And oh yeah. Same thing here. And of course, uh, the most classic example of of an impaler is uh, probably Vlad the Impaler, um, Dracula. Prince of Wallachia, he's credited as the first notable figure to prefer this method of execution during the late medieval period, became so notorious for its liberal employment that among his several nicknames, he was known as Vlad the Impaler. After being orphaned, betrayed, forced into exile, and pursued by his enemies, he retook control of Wallachia in 1456. He dealt harshly with his enemies, especially those who had betrayed his family in the past. Whoops. Uh, or profited from their misfortunes. Not a guy you wanted to cross. Uh, though a variety of methods were employed, he has mo- been most associated with the, his use of impalement. The liberal use of capital punishment was eventually extended to Saxon settlers, members of a rival clan, and criminals in his domain, whether they were members of the boyer nobility or peasants, and eventually 
to any among um, his subjects that displeased him. <laughs> so just, you know, like, if you even mildly offended Vlad, you were you, you basically were going to get fucking... Yeah, you mean, like, let's say Vlad shows up to the party. A big ass fucking... You're wearing a fucking cooler shirt. He's all like, I don't really like that guy. I'll just fucking kill him. Yeah. And pale that motherfucker. I mean, at least he applied it equally. You know what I mean? He didn't give the nobility an easy way out. You know, he like, made it's fuck, wrong he did to spill up royal shit, like, blood. Making people dance and be eat, uh, cooked alive, making people eat part of their bodies before they fucking were impaled. Yep. He was a hardcore motherfucker. Uh, here's dude. a little he thing about around. him: um, he let children be roasted, those their mothers were forced to eat. Yep. He cut off the breasts of women, those their husbands were forced to eat, and after that, he had them all impaled. Oh, God. That's just his, like, good time, you know? So just, it's not even just the impaling. Like, no, he's like, no. impalement isn't first. enough. I want to see you. I want to roast your child in front of you, force, force you, you to, to eat, eat them, them, and then impale you, you know? And then, uh, if you know, maybe if you're a dude, I'll just cut your wife's tits off, make you eat those, then I'll impale you. You know, I want you to think about that while you're being impaled. And you, you know, know what the funny thing is? He still had a bunch of people to impale, so this idea that the harshest of penalties stops people from transgressing. I mean, he... It, it, it sounds like they're saying without saying it here that he was pretty much insane by the end and was just killing everybody. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't sound like you really had to do much of a transgression but to still, get impaled. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't it didn't stop people from crossing him. You know, he still has his defenders to this day, too. People are like, yeah, he was actually a really good leader, honestly. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, uh, if it's basically you just please seized or so you get impaled that doesn't really say much about the system that people are living under maybe, this one seems kind of maybe, maybe for the time it was good I don't know this one seems kind of nice compared to some of the other stuff we've looked at but uh, hanging hanging another Go one with a hanging. long article and a long tradition oh yeah this, we've been doing this for a while man uh, here let's take a little look at a little uh, hanging painting from uh, hang them high back in the day this is a painting of some rapscallions, some ruffians and rogues of the evening These having their necks way, stretched. <laughs> <laughs> so hanging is the suspension of a person by a noose or ligature around the neck. The Oxford English Dictionary states that hanging in this sense is specifically to put to death by suspension by the neck, though it formerly also referred to crucifixion and death by impalement in which the body would remain hanging, quote unquote. Uh, it's been a common method of capital punishment since medieval times. It's the official execution method of uh, numerous countries and regions to this day. Yep. The first account of execution by hanging was in Homer's Odyssey. Um, hanging is also a common method of suicide. You know, I think we all know that. Of course. Uh, so let's see. Uh, it's been used in Australia, Brazil, Bulgaria, can Canada, Egypt, Germany, Hungary, India, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Japan, Jordan, Lebanon, Liberia, Malaysia, Portugal, Pakistan, Russia, Singapore, Syria, United Kingdom, United States. Um, Jews were often punished by something called inverted hanging. Uh, usually the thing that kills you is not the, 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 the cutting off of oxygen, although that can kill you. Uh, a lot of times it's about breaking your neck. I mean, a lot of these, there, there's different kinds of hangings. Right. There's short drop and long drop hanging, and there's forced, like, weight-based strangulation where you're just tied to a pole and leaned forward. Yeah, I could show you a picture of that. Uh, this is a mass execution by hanging performed by the, uh, the Serbs. Yeah, uh, and you see just a whole row of people uh, that are just, you know, suspended by their neck from a stick. You know, real, real, uh, just, you know, they're not being dropped from any height. So that would nope. be strangulation. Now this is a fucking crazy picture. This is an old west. Um, Did the uh, guy's head just come off? Of a guy named Black Jack. It was a long drop uh, hanging, and his head just popped oh off of his God. body. Just pop right and off. And this is a picture of the guys posing with the corpse, and you can see it says their body of Black and Jack. And Voldemort executed. was there. That's yeah. kind of neat. <laughs> there he is. Good old so, Voldemort. That was definitely a merciful kind of death. Um, you know, you're not going to well, really yeah, I mean, feel you, much if your head just is popped when you, off. Yeah, when you look at... Well, yeah, I mean, imagine what we were talking about before, like all these more ancient methods, like... People probably thought this was like a humane way to kill people at the time. Like, you know what? Your neck just snaps and you're dead. 
Yep. As opposed to being burned or stabbed or fucking broken on the fucking wheel or crushed. But even if you just strangle to death there, it's more merciful than anything. Well, that we've here's the thing here. about hanging too: is uh, with the short drop hanging, you do die by uh, strangulation, yep. but you lose consciousness within about six to fifteen. That's, seconds. that's what I'm saying. So it's like, uh, and right. then, and you know, and it takes about twenty minutes for you to actually die, but you're. You're not really aware of what's going on after about yeah, 20 Also, seconds. it's relatively bloodless. I mean, when you're talking about crushing somebody or, or stabbing them or impaling them, that's disgusting. Not in the case of Blackjack, though. He did. Well, yeah, but that's very that's an exceptional case. So the standard drop, uh, that's about breaking your neck. The long drop, I guess that's just if they really want to make sure the neck is broken. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people have obviously used it for suicide and stuff as well. Um, you know, probably where I think of hanging the most is like the Old West. I mean, it's hardly restricted to there. It's been used all throughout history. There's a really cool tons scene of different countries. at the beginning of the uh, HBO series Deadwood. It's one of the opening scenes mm-hmm. where uh, the sheriff, who's the central uh, character, um, Seth Bullock, is in possession of a prisoner who's um, accused of horse thievery and a mob come, shows up and they're like, we're going to kill this motherfucker. Give him to us. And he's like, absolutely not. You know, if this guy's going to die, it's going to happen under color of law. And he hangs him right there on the porch. And the guy's like, you'll help me with my fucking fall. Won't you? And he's like, yep. Yeah. He kicks the stool out from under him. He starts to strangle. And then Bullock gets underneath him, grabs his legs, lifts him up and drops him. And they just, <laughs> As an act of mercy, so that he didn't have to strangle there to death. So, for some reason, uh, even though it's not really the greatest movie ever made, I kind of think of um, the Quick and the Dead. Yeah. I oh, it, the opening scene. I think like, that scene. Yeah. I don't know if is it the opener. I thought it was the opener, but it's, I, it's, a, it's early it's, in the film. In the it's early in the movie. Yeah. yeah it, you know, it shows the the girl as a child. She's told by the bandits that just killed her father that if she can shoot the rope. And, you know, cut him down, you know, that uh, he'll, they'll let him free, basically. And uh, because she doesn't know what she's doing with a pistol, she ends up shooting her father in the head. And they they just kind of laugh and ride off. And that's the impetus for her to go get revenge and shit. Right. Uh, so that's what I think about. I think about Clint Eastwood in uh, one of those movies where he has to, I think it's uh, actually the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Where, where he's, he's tied to that, his horse. Yeah, well, he's got that scam where he's, he... He brings in, um, you know, the, the 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 criminal, the wanted criminal, then then saves him. Oh, you know, g- yeah, gets yeah. the reward and then saves him before he's hanging and takes him to the next town and be like, I found him. You know, what then, movie is it where the dude is tied to his horse to a tree, uh, and they let the horse sit there until it wants to go look for water, and then oh, I know you're talking. You know about. what I mean? I can't remember what it's in. Oh, you know what that's in? That's in fucking um. That fucking Mel Gibson movie where he's the gambler. Oh, right. Maverick. Maverick, yeah. They tie him to a horse from the tree. <laughs> yeah. And then they put snakes down there, and he's trying to get the horse not to run away. That's a cool one. I, yeah. I actually kind of like, I like that. I haven't seen it in a while, though. Um, this is uh, the Nazis like to use it as well. Go figure. Uh, yeah, these are this Polish. is a bunch of Polish people being executed by the Nazis. In, and you can uh, see they're emaciated as fuck already. So yeah. they've already been tortured and starved. And then this is their end. This here. was a thing. I remember, uh, I don't know if you've read uh, Night by uh, Eli Wiesel. No. Uh, yeah. But um, he was a Holocaust survivor. And he describes a scene in the book where um, they actually uh, hanged a... Uh, like a little Jewish kid, and because he was so light, it took a really long time for him to die. Uh, and so they all had to, act, and they were actually like, you know, all forced to watch. So they had to sit there and watch for like 30 minutes while this kid was still twitching and shit because he was just like a little, like eight or nine year old or something. Up. Yeah, emaciated fucking. <laughs> the Nazis. I don't know if you guys know this, the Nazis were kind of dicks. Yes. Wow. A little bit. News flash. News flash. The Nazis were not Breaking nice. news. The Nazis were assholes. They were not nice guys. Wow. Just everywhere has used this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the inverted uh, hanging before we move on. This is the Jewish punishment. Okay. Uh, let me just get a picture of that up, too, so we can take a quick look. Um, this is crazy looking. So you obviously don't die the same way no. with uh, with the inverted hanging. 
completely different principle of hanging. Oh, two between yeah, it's only like yeah, the two starving dogs. Yeah, you're hung uh, along with two dogs. That of course the dogs are freaking out, and uh, you know they're gonna just kind of rip you apart. Um, yeah, these are animals or wolves. It wasn't always starve. an execution method. A lot of times it was just a torture method. Um, oh my fucking god, dude! So the inverted hanging with the accompaniment of two dogs, originally reserved for traders, was identified from the 14th century as the Jewish execution, being practiced in the later Middle Ages in both Northern and Mediterranean Europe. The Jewish execution in Germany has been thoroughly studied by G. Kish, uh, who was argue, who argued convincingly that neither the inverted hanging nor the stringing up of dogs or wolves besides the victim were particularly Jewish punishments during the High Middle Ages. They first appeared as Jewish punishments in Germany only towards the end of the 13th century. Are never they saying being Jewish recognized. punishments that Jews carried out or that were carried out against Jews? Um, let's see. Uh, this came to be primarily associated with Jewish thieves called Juden Straits. Yeah, okay. it was carried against Jews. Got it. So, against Jews. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty fucked up way to die. Uh, there's a method. I don't know what culture used it, but it was pretty fucked up. They'd, like, tie you in a bag with a dog and a monkey, monkey and, and a snake. snake. And throw you in the river. And throw oh, you man. into the river. And that's like, obviously the animals <laughs> go mad. Bites the shit out of you and you all suffocate together. Yeah, you know, that's no fun. So, uh, this is beheading, decapitation. Let's take a look. This is a scene here. It's the decapitation of St. Paul. Yeah, his he- notice how his head, like, glows. That's yeah. just like of a course. fucking glow stick, dude. Yeah, that's how fucking magical Well, they he actually was. have this in, um, I think, at, I think at the Vatican City, they have the spot where he was supposedly uh, decapitated. Oh, did you see it? Yeah. yeah, this the, this was painting, his head there glowing. Oh yeah, of course, dude. This painting is in the Louvre as well. Um, so we, I might have seen we might have seen this. Probably, painting. I think I think we should have seen this painting. Maybe I don't remember it, but well, you, you know there was I saw a shit ton of paintings that day, so you know who knows. Um, here's some uh, peasants. French peasants. Yeah, this is uh, I'm assuming during the uh, the French Revolution. Yep, carrying the powdered wigs wigged heads of some freshly guillotined nobility. They look pretty happy about it, too. Like, yeah. Uh, of course they are. We these fucked are their these rich faggots up. Fucked them up. What are, what's on the other sticks? I don't know. Like, testicles? Yeah. I, I was looking at that, and I was like, you know, the heads are being raised high as, as examples of the execution, but what kind of viscera is hanging from those other sticks? It looks like fucking testicles. Balls to me, or man. their guts, maybe. Woohoo! Uh, this is, of course, these 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 people were executed by the uh, the guillotine. Yeah, these not always uh, in the French Revolution, but, but a lot but, of them were. But yeah, very very common. A lot of them were. also seen as very human. Even the at time. inventor of the guillotine was executed yep. <laughs> with the guillotine. So well, another thing they thought That'd it was be a humane. shitty moment for him. You know, they thought you put your head in, the blade comes down, you're killed. It's a mod- at the time it seemed very modern, ethical. Like, look, you're just gonna be your head's gonna be chopped off quickly. You know, you don't have to worry about the blade failing or whatever. It's just going to slide down, kill you, and that's it. Uh, Nazis also use guillotines, so that's kind of cool. The guillotine was used up to the 1970s. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, in France, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. the French were still using that motherfucker in the, into the 70s, you know? Um, Obviously, it became less common after the French Revolution, but... Uh, that was a but beheading is another one of those ones that's just everywhere. It's all throughout history. It's all throughout fucking cultures across the fucking globe. Yep. You know, there's certain ones of these, like, some of them seem more obscure, like boiling people alive. Yeah, it was done, but it wasn't super common throughout history. But things like hanging and decapitating, those things are just like all across every fucking human society, every continent where there's people, every society where there's people. You know, this is just a pretty common way of, 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 you know, ridding society of the people you don't like. I mean, well, for a lot of human history, it's like you're figuring that they're, they're going to go with the cheapest and easiest and most plausible way. So it's like bludgeon you to death, stab you, hang you. You know, people are going to go with what's easy. Yeah. And what, and what can with be done? decapitation, too, though, and a lot of these, it's also about the the brutality of it. You know, because maybe not for the person, but for the people that were meant to be watching it. 
you know, can you imagine what it must have been like to be present at a guillotining? You know, the gout of blood that would shoot out in the head. I mean, it would just be a fucking totally surreal experience and just burn into your memory, I'd, I'd imagine. Well, especially because in the French Revolution in particular was the nobility. It was like the tax farmers and people they were killing. It's like, yeah, that's, it's like, that, that's like us seeing like, yeah, like people we see like Bill Gates going to be executed like that motherfucker did us wrong. Yeah, some big pharmaceutical executive or something dragged out. Yeah, the, the fucking head of, head of the big bank, all the big banks and fucking uh, people fucking are brought to a stage and executed in front of us, you know, instead of just, you know, getting away with all their scams. Yeah. In uh, ancient Japan, like if a soldier fled from battle, uh, someone from the samurai class could uh, decapitate them. Um, and uh, what they'd have to do, they'd force you, or I guess it was it was viewed as like, this is how you can preserve your honor, basically. You know, you've dishonored yourself. The only way to restore your honor is you've got to take a small blade. Disembowel yourself. You know, cut your fucking stomach open, spill your guts, and then you'll f- kind of fall and then... A samurai chops your head off, yeah, like separate head off basically. With a katana. You just like you just like kind of disembowel yourself, and then your head's cut and off. And then you would have been seen to have died honorably, right? Right. And, and then no matter what your transgression was, uh, yeah, um, basic. And it was the katana thing was about mercy. It was basically show I mean, like you were showing them by disemboweling yourself that I'm willing to kill myself and die painfully, and then they would do you the merciful act of chopping your head off and ending to e- end your suffering and to hasten your death. Got it. So it was it was kind of a you know a very ritualistic thing. Um now this this is just uh, take a look. Paul's already seen it. Um this hold, hold on, hold on. There's something that you missed with the beheading thing. Okay, we can go back go, to the go, if, for a if you if you have the document up. Yeah, I got it. Um, there's something I wanted you to read about the head lives on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we crazy. can talk about that. Um, and this is something that is kind of called into question because there's really no ethical way to study what happens to a decapitated human head by a scientist. So there are scientists that believe different things about this, but this is an account from a, a historical beheading of somebody who was there who made a point to observe what the head did starting as soon as it was severed from the body. Yeah. All right, so the head fell on the severed surface of the neck, and I did not therefore have to take it up in my hands as all the newspapers have vied with each other in repeating. I was not obligated even to touch it in order to set it upright. Chance served me well for the observation which I wish to make. Here then is what I was able to note immediately after the decapitation. The eyelids and the lips of the guillotined man worked in irregularly rhythmic contractions of about five or six seconds. This phenomenon has been remarked by all those finding themselves in the same conditions as myself for observing what happens after severing the neck. So your eyes and your lips like... What? I waited for several seconds. The spasmodic movement ceased. The face relaxed, relaxed. the lids half closed on the eyeballs, leaving only the white of the conjunctiva visible, exactly as in the dying whom we have occasionally we have occasion to see every day in the exercise of our profession, or as in those just dead. It was then that I called in a strong, sharp voice, Langui? The name of the man that was killed. Oh, okay. I saw the eyelids slowly lift up without any spasmodic contractions. I insist advisedly on this peculiarity, but within, but with an even movement quite distinct and normal, such as happens in everyday life with people awakened or torn from their thoughts. Next, Langui's Langui's eyes. Uh, very definitely fixed themselves on mine and the pupils focused themselves. I was not then dealing with a sort of vague, dull look without any expression that can be observed any day in dying people to whom one speaks. I was dealing with undeniably living eyes which were looking at me. After several seconds, the eyelids closed again, slowly and evenly, and the head took on the same appearance as it had before I called out. It was at that point that I called out again once more without any spasm. Slowly the eyelids lifted and undeniably living eyes fixed themselves on mine and perhaps even more penetration than the first time. Uh, Then there was a further closing of the eyes, but now less complete. I attempted 
the effect of a third call. There was no further movement, and the eyes took on the glazed look which they have in the dead. So that's fucking crazy, dude. Can you imagine, like, so, like, for at least for like twenty or thirty seconds, kind of like, huh? Yeah. And I mean, once again, scientists and medical professionals are kind of varied on whether or not. I mean, uh, they they agree that there's probably some spasmodic twitching of the face, but as to whether or not there's a modicum of consciousness for thirty yeah. seconds or forty seconds, this this um, is in dispute. Like this account is in dispute. But I think sure, it's it, it's an interesting thing to think about because it can't be ruled out. You know, nobody's nobody's been able. There's no way to study it. So there's a, there's a distinct possibility that if you Let's are just, guillotined, look, that for 30 seconds or so you remain responsible. Paul, there is a way to study this. Let's fucking take all the people on death row, and we're gonna just we'll fucking hook their head up to some fucking you know modern shit. We'll fucking do some MRIs. We'll scan their brains and shit. Chop their heads off and see what happens. Sounds ethical. Let's see if there's any like Let's activity in those ranges of the brains. Come on, guys. Let's do it, man. To answer this question. So, back to this creepy shit. We covered this one earlier in the kind of overview. This is hung, drawn, and quartered. Yeah. Uh, The early parts of it. Uh, This is pretty unique. Look at that dude pointing. This is not one of the ones that's happened all across the world. I I, I like the people pointing like, look, dude, that guy's guy's being like fucking disemboweled up there. Check this motherfucker out. Like, you want to point. This This guy right here is like, 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 who has to point at that? If that was happening all around us now, our eyes would be fixated like, what the fuck is going on? There's another dude Dude, pointing Look at this guy next to him that's just like stoned, too. He's like, whoa, bro. Looks like they were just walking along and he's like, dude, do you see this? What the fuck? What, what's dude, going this on? This guy over is here? totally fucking baked. Dude, this guy him. is totally fucking. Dude, yeah, this guy's blazed. Like <laughs> everyone there is kind of blazed. Whoa, I think they all got high and like, this dude, guy, dude, dude, you want to see a guy get like drawn and corded and shit? Like, and yeah, look at bro. this guy. This guy is having a grand old time. Yeah, he's got he a big loves his smile work. on his face and shit. The, fucking, the guy is doing it too. Kind of looks like he's drunk. He's like, whoa, like, whoa man, like, man, it just kind of sucks. I mean, his dick it chopped and balls his dick have been off. You know, oh damn, man, that fucking sucks. His guts have been pulled out. They're they're to be soon thrown into the fire while he's still alive. They were fastened to a hurdle or wood panel drawn by a horse to the place of execution where they were hanged. So they were dragged. Almost to the point of death. They were then emasculated. That's where they chop your dick yeah, off. Yeah, chop your fucking... Disemboweled, beheaded, and quartered. Chopped into four so pieces. This guy's only like halfway through his shit, dude. Yep. It's just begun. Yeah, he ain't even He ain't even got to the fun stuff yet. He ain't been disemboweled yet. I mean, maybe a little, but you know... The severity of the sentence was measured against the severity of the crime. As an attack on the monarch's authority, high treason was considered a deplorable act demanding the most extreme form of punishment. Although some convicts had their sentence modified and suffered a less ignominious end, over a period of several hundred years, many men found guilty of high treason were subjected to the law's ultimate sanction— uh, they included many English Catholic priests executed during the uh, Elizabethan Elizabethan era, and uh, several of the regicides involved in the uh, 1649 execution of Charles the First. Whoa, shit, dude! So, th- but this was a this was a distinctly English punishment. Like you go through this article, it's not like here's all the countries this has been done in. This was uniquely an English means of of murdering people in the name of the state. Um, and then, of course, they send the four pieces off to uh, four different parts of the, uh, the community to let everyone know this is what happens if you shit talk the king, basically. Yeah, is this a bad shit about the king? Here's the last guy that did it. Yeesh. Yep, cut into chunks and, like, Toured around the country, like here's a chunk of somebody so, I mean, fucked up. I on think the I think it's almost the point to get into the the efficacy of this because I mean it, it, it's interesting to note all the all these punishments, but even this, people still talk to, talk shit about the king. People still challenge the authority of the monarchy. Oh, of course they did. I mean, even with this being the punishment, so it really just shows you like it, it wasn't effective. I, I mean, mean yeah. this has been debunked over and over again since the beginning of time. This idea that the more harsh and um, you know 
ugly and painful that the the end is the less likely people are to transgress against whatever the law of the land is and that's just like if that were true we wouldn't be reading about all these accounts of people that were burned or drowned or fucking hung you know what i mean if people were afraid of that to the point where they wouldn't transgress we wouldn't have all these accounts i mean you know, certainly some of these accounts are people that were executed that didn't do anything wrong sure but there were still people stealing there were still people blaspheming there were still people doing whatever um, even though they knew that this was their punishment. So it just doesn't work. <clears throat> we got a few more to go through. We can kind of speed through them at sure. this point because these are, we're, we're now into the more modern ones that people are probably a little bit more familiar with. Um, the first, the, the, probably the most common one today, I'd imagine, lethal injection. Yep. Um, you see here the table they strap you in on. This is the uh, lethal injection chamber at San Quentin in California. This What's interesting is the, is the huge dispute about this is that uh, the drug makers, I think they're, they're German or they're in Europe, actually stopped providing the drugs to the U.S. to execute people. Right. Because they actually said they, they argued it was painful. In a lot of cases, people have suffered agonizing deaths. They're supposed to be, uh, uh, at this point, relatively painless. Like, you're supposed to be put to sleep, and then you're just killed. But it, but it's done it's done haphazardly, and there's a lot of legal challenges out right now in the lower and higher courts uh, calling this cruel and unusual punishment. So there are a lot of people on death row right now This The, the neat thing about this, this one down. is uh, we invented it. This is developed in the United States. Right. Uh, it's now also a method of execution in China, Thailand, Guatemala, Taiwan... Maldives and Vietnam. Seems like the Asian countries really like this. They were like, oh, new method of execution. <laughs> well, think about it. It's because it's billed as like, this is very humane. Like, it's just kind of like you go to sleep and then you're killed. That's the way it's supposed to be. That, that, doesn't that's, always that, work that, that way. That's the theory of it is, you know, this happens to you and you're dead and it's, and it's very sterile. It's a, look how clinical this environment. It looks like a, almost like a medical procedure, just against your will. It's of carried course. out like one, yeah. It's carried out in that, in that fashion. Here's the room you get to die in. We strap you down and then inject you with it. Like, I think it's three separate drugs. They give you a, a barbiturate, a paralytic, and a potassium solution. Yeah. For the express purpose of causing immediate death. And now there's Which been there's been really botched work. ones where you hear the dude screaming and struggling. So obviously, you know, they don't always get the mixture just right. Yeah, those botched ones are the subject of those court challenges where people that are on death row are saying, this is cruel and unusual. Look what happened to this guy. Look what happened to this guy. And yet again, I mean, they, at, the, at the time in the country, in the U.S., that, this was the penalty and people still committed the crimes. It's like... It's just interesting because people act like crimes are committed with a rational person. Like it's like humans are very emotional animals. It's not like people think, okay, if I do this, then I'm I'm facing this. At a time, they might not give a shit. There might be a crime of passion. There might be a moment you're angry with somebody and you push them and they fall and break their neck and die. Right. The, and does the that mis, mean that the misguided idea that you can get away with it? You can't scare that out of people. So um. You know, it, it gained popular. It was actually first proposed in uh, 1888 by a doctor who his argument for it was it'll be cheaper than hanging. Um, gained Definitely popularity in the late 20th century um, because it was viewed as being more humane than mm -hmm. uh, other methods at the time, which included electrocution, gas inhalation, the gas chamber, uh, hanging, and firing squad. Personally, I think firing squad, you, you know, know? You know what's funny? The don't most... Even, but not, don't, 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 just fucking come up to me and shoot me in the back of the fucking head, well, you, you know? You can't do that, though. The firing squad, I mean, we'll get to it, but there, yeah. there's a reason why it's set up the way it is. Right, right, I know. Um, but, uh, yeah, that this is the, the most commonly used one today. Um, uh, oh, by far. The electric chair, that's another popular one. Uh, here's a, an old school... This is actually um, the first electric chair as it was invented and proposed. This appeared in um, newspapers as an example of the new method of execution that was going to be used. This is going to be great, guys. Uh, what is this? This is where is this? That at? is um, the the electric chair at New Mexico State Prison. Okay. One thing you notice about a lot of executions as it gets more into contemporary times is how detached it seems. Like we just flip a switch and you die. It's not necessarily I'm killing you. It's this is killing you. So um, the uh, the electric chair originated in the United States. Another one we invented. Thanks, you know, good on us. Yep. A uh, well, condemned prisoner is strapped to a specifically built wooden chair and electrocuted through electrodes fastened on the head and leg. Uh, it was invented 
in 1881 uh, by a Buffalo, New York dentist named Alfred P. Southwick. Uh, it, was, it was, once again, it's a humane alternative to hanging. Oh. You know, I'm pretty sure I'd rather be hanged. Uh, you know? no, knowing <laughs> that if, you, if your neck doesn't break, you've only got between 6 and 20 seconds of consciousness left before you just lapse into unconsciousness and are effectively dead. Yeah. Because, once again, this method of, of execution is riddled with um, examples of people who weren't killed by the initial jolt, who suffered greatly, who had to be shocked multiple I, times. I just love the died. idea that there, there can be humane way. Look, this is a humane way to kill you. It's like, how about not just not killing criminals like yeah, that? How about, not, how about not killing them? <laughs> or a bullet <laughs> to the head. You know what I mean? Like, like TJ said. You yeah, know? I mean, like, if you're going to kill people, which I don't think you should do, but if you're going to do it, like... You know, like when you when they kill cows at a slaughterhouse, we've all seen that thing in uh, No Country for Old Men that just Boom. fires a little pin into your head and then retracts the pin back. And uh, do that, yep. stick that up against my brain. Boom, you're dead. Instant. Boom, dead. Yeah, I mean, you can even have a fucking machine that just does it at random intervals. Yep. You don't even have to let me know. Just do it while I'm sleeping one night. Da, 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 boom, dead. <laughs> you know, just don't wake. I just don't wake up the next day. Whatever. Um, well, it's about punishment, though. That's really sure, uh, sure, obviously sure. The, 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 that's the cultural idea: is you did something wrong, so now you're being punished. And this is a for creepy it. looking one. What, what, where is this? This is a, a gas chamber. Yeah. I forget. Oh, it's what, a gas chamber, and it's not being used currently. But gas chambers like this are are still um, up and and running. Crazy. We, I don't, we don't. I don't think we have an article for the gas chamber. But I think I pulled one, but you might have missed it. It's no big deal. I mean, yeah, we whatever. Cover these. I mean, the idea behind this one is cyanide gas. So you're thrown into a room. Oxygen is pumped out, so you get woozy, and cyanide gas is pumped in. And then once you're dead, the room is obviously flushed of cyanide gas, and your body is taken out. So cool. Um, another a pretty painful way. Once again, the idea of this was that you pass out and then you're slowly poisoned, but that doesn't always work. People have been uh, awake as they started to die from the cyanide poisoning, suffered greatly, screamed, yelled. Um, so there's a reason why this one's not really super common anymore. Uh, there's um, this is a uh, firing squad execution. Um, Execution by firing squad in the past, sometimes called fusillading. Fusillading. Yep. Uh, from the French uh, fusil, which means rifle. It's a method of capital punishment, particularly common in the military and in times of war. I mean, because you have all the materials to do it right there on your right. person. Execution by shooting is a fairly old practice. Uh, some reasons for its use are that firearms are usually readily available, and a gunshot to a vital organ usually kills relatively quickly. This is a really crazy picture, too. If you really look at what's going on in it, um, it's a shot that was taken just after the bullets were fired, so you can see the dirt being kicked up by the bullets that have passed yeah. through the men's bodies, but it was taken but they before they fell. Yet. Yeah, right. Fallen yet. So you can see the one on the extreme right, our right, is doubled over in pain, obviously having just taken a bullet through the midsection. Um, but none of them have fallen yet, so it's a really incredible... I mean, it's it's ugly, but it's an incredible yeah, piece perfect. of photography. Something if you really, timed perfectly. Yep. There's another picture as well that's kind of similar, that's a very, very... Um, this is not it, but this is another um, example of it. This this one really is the example of firing squad as it was used in even more modern times. The idea behind the firing squad is you use rank and file cadets, and people like that might have misgivings about killing a blindfolded, helpless man. So you don't tell them whose rifle is loaded. You you put blanks in all of the rifles except for one or two. And um, then you have all of the guys line up. They don't know whether they've got the real bullet. They all take aim. They all fire at the moment that it's called. And so none of the men have to walk away feeling guilty as if they were the ones that there, there's always that ambiguity. Like, yeah, well, I had a blank. Yeah. Also, you know, like I said, it, it's trying to remove. It's going to make it more dispassionate. You know, it's like, look, you're not just killing a guy who a, a fucking sitting duck here. You know, you might not have been the guy to kill him. Someone killed him. Who knows who did it? Right. And it wasn't always done that way. Sometimes all of the rifles were, were loaded. Uh, yeah, were loaded. Just, sometimes just... only one, sometimes several. You know what I mean? But it was always so that the people that did it could walk away with a sense of, you know, at least it wasn't, you know, it probably wasn't me. 
Yeah. It wasn't me that did the killing. I just aimed a, and, and fired a blank. And, and, you know, I don't have to carry the weight of that around with me. Um, there's another famous picture that I didn't pull here um, of a, a Vietnamese man being executed yeah. oh, with yeah. a shot to the head. And it's another one of those. Is that the one that I uh, hung up in your bedroom? Yes. In, yeah. Uh, when you came to probably, visit. Yes. Probably too Washington. graphic for the, the. Yeah. I didn't want I didn't yeah. want to risk us getting pulled for it. But it's it shows the moment that the trigger is pulled and enters his brain. And it's that frame. It's one of the most haunting pictures you ever you'll, you'll ever really get right, to so look at. So we've gone through plenty of methods of execution let's talk about the politics of the death penalty for a little bit so this is uh, our country here united states of america the uh red is states where the death penalty is uh, a thing the blue is states that don't have the death penalty is that right yes correct i'm surprised alaska doesn't have the death penalty no alaska hawaii new mexico uh looks like North Dakota, I guess South Dakota has it still, though. Uh, Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, the Dakotas Michi- don't, Michigan. <laughs> don't agree on the death penalty. I think that's funny. Looks like, what is that? Iowa, Illinois, West Virginia, New York, um, I think it's Maine. 30, I think it's 30 states out of the 50 that are currently, uh, or it might be a little more than 30. It's somewhere in the 30s. I can't remember the number. Much of that's Vermont up there. I mean, yeah, but a lot of the northeastern states, besides Pennsylvania... Damn, but most of the country, you can be executed still. Yep. Louisiana, you can, of course. Not surprising. I'm surprised by the West Coast, though. Portland, I mean, not Portland, uh, Oregon, Washington, and California, all death penalty states. Yeah. Which is kind of surprising. I mean, there are California, more California, I think, executes the most other than Texas. Uh, well, there are the most people on death row in California um, than any state in the country there are more people sitting awaiting execution but texas is far and away exceeds any other state in terms of the number of executions that yeah, are they really out. love killing and people also there. by the way the safest state sure <laughs> the safest state. absolutely safe the safest place well to let's be. talk about five death penalty myths and these are not comprehensive there are a lot of things and maybe we can talk about some that aren't covered on this list if we think of them but this is just a list of things that people tend to believe about the death penalty that are just factually This inaccurate. comes from Amnesty International. It's a very... Liberal. Libs. Goddamn liberal So cucks. basically, if you have a brain, discard this list. So here's a myth. The death penalty deters violent crime and it, makes society safer. Of course it does not. Uh, here's the fact. There's no convincing evidence that the death penalty has a unique deterrent effect. More than three decades after abolishing the death penalty, Canada's murder rate remains over one-third lower than it was in 1976 when they did it. So a abolishing the death year penalty study, also actually saw like a, a decrease. I don't know if there's a correlation right, there. Right, but, but I'm it, just saying. There was no increase in crime because people are like, oh, well, they won't kill me anymore? Well, fuck it. I might as well murder. Yeah, I'll just get life in prison. It's like, you know, I mean... <laughs> A 35-year study compared murder rates between Hong Kong, where there is no death penalty, and Singapore, which has a similar size population and executed regularly. The death penalty had little impact on crime rates. So basically no impact on crime rates is what I'm hearing there. Myth. The threat of execution is an effective strategy in preventing terrorist attacks. Well, that's just outright stupid. A lot of these terrorist attacks are suicide yeah. attacks, yeah, so they're terrorists not afraid don't give to a die. Shit. Well, yeah, are they carried out killed. under the assumption that you will be killed during the operation? Or the assumption that after you do it, you'll go to paradise. So it's like yeah. it's almost incentivized. I can't wait to get my 72 virgins. Yeah. Uh, the prospect of execution is unlikely to act as a deterrent to people prepared to kill and injure for the sake of political or other ideology. Indeed, some officials responsible for counterterrorism have reportedly have repeatedly pointed out that those who are executed can be perceived as martyrs whose memory becomes a rallying point for their ideo- ideology or organizations. Armed opposition groups have also pointed to the use of the death penalty as a justification for reprisals, thereby continuing the cycle of violence. Um, not to mention, a lot of these people are not afraid to die. They take that risk every time they fucking commit an attack, and sometimes, well, they, they, you know, sometimes it, they intend to die in the it's a, it's a tribal element, too. It's like, well, you killed this person in my group, so I want to kill you as revenge for that. I mean... Yep. Th- so here's another myth. The death penalty is fine as long as the majority of the public supports it. Uh, fact, history is littered with human rights violations that were supported by the majority. We, sh- we just looked at some of the barbaric, yeah, hideous the, shit. The tyranny I mean, of the majority. That human beings were willing to be like, yep. And how many of those, when we were reading about them, was it like, you know, this person was tortured 
and then confessed and then was boiled or burned. And all the, and all these it's times like, were way more violent times. The murder rate was higher. The robbery rates were higher. Every, every crime statistic would be way fucking higher unless, unless they just didn't exist. Unless the crime didn't exist, I guarantee you 500 years ago when they were crushing people to death, people were way more violent. That's what people knew. That's why it was. That, that's why these punishments, these punishments were a, reflex, a reflection of the cultural state of people at that time. It's like you stole something, cut off his hand. That's going to show you. It's these very draconian, very brutal punishments because that's what people know and that's what they want to see. That's a reflection of that society. Here's another myth. All the people who have been executed have been proven guilty of serious crimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we read that. What a joke, dude. Around the world, hundreds of prisoners are executed after grossly unfair trials. This can include the use of confessions extracted under torture. No evidence. The denial of access to lawyers or inadequate legal representation. The countries that execute the most are also the ones where serious concerns exist about the fairness of the justice system, such as in China, Iran, and Iraq. The 144 exonerations. Yeah, they don't list it, but yeah, that's another one. The 144 exonerations of death row prisoners recorded in the USA since 1973. So we've exonerated 144 people on death row in our country since 1973. These are people who are sentenced to death, and then later yeah. it was discovered like, oh, they're not guilty. This is the fucking price you pay to have the death penalty is how many people who are innocent have been executed or were going to be executed if it wasn't for DNA, if it wasn't for science and technology, would have just been killed. Well, that's, that's what kills it for me. And I think we've got, is there one more little myth? There is. Okay, let's get through that. Uh, myth, relatives of murder victims demand capital punishment. I mean, sometimes they do. Uh, the worldwide anti-death penalty movement includes many who have lost their loved ones to or have themselves been victims of violent crime, but for ethical or religious reasons, I like how they make a distinction between those two things, do not want the death penalty imposed in their name. In the USA, organizations such as Murder Victims Families for Human Rights are driving the movement to abolish the death penalty, for example, in New Hampshire. And also... Here's, here's something that cuts more to the heart of it to me. I don't care if the families of murder victims want the killer killed. Of course yeah. they do. Why does, their, why does their opinion on whether this person should live or die have any more What is this than emotionally mine? compromised person Exactly. Think? It's just like another, another myth that isn't listed here that's a really big one that you hear all the time in pro-death penalty uh, arguments is that it's cheaper to kill people than it is to house them for the rest of their lives. Like, if these people raped a bunch of babies and killed a bunch of kids in a school shooting or whatever, why are we going to pay to keep them alive their entire lives? Just shoot them. Just get rid of them. <laughs> and you know what? That might be true that it's cheaper to do that in some of these other countries we've mentioned where the justice system isn't really a thing or it isn't as developed as ours. But when somebody's sentenced to death in this country, there are multiple redundant federal appeals that have to be gone through. And these people are given legal representation. Just get rid of that damn appeals. There's court. Yeah, see, that's the thing. But the reason we don't get rid of those appeals is the next and last thing on our list that I pulled, Uh, which is a list of people that were likely executed falsely, that have been posthumously exonerated, or or their convictions have been called into question. This is a list of people that more than likely were killed. One of for them crimes this year. they did not commit, one this year. And I mean, the whole concept of justice is supposed to be, it's supposed to be blind. It's not supposed to be vindictive. It's not supposed to be based on emotion. It's supposed to be based on, this is the letter of law. We want to keep, we want laws to protect our society, to keep people safe. So I want people to really think about the horror of this. Let's, I want to see about this guy that was just executed this year that, that was sure. likely innocent. Let's see. Uh, where is he? Um, right there. No, that's 2015. 2015. Um, I mean, another another element is like is like lynchings, dude. It's when they when they lynch people. I mean, it's like, oh, you you whistled at a white woman, so now you have to be killed by an angry mob. You know right. what I mean? There's so many elements to why the death penalty doesn't make sense, or frontier justice, or mob justice, or the state sanctioning this penalty does not make any fucking sense. Yep. All right. At all. So this is the guy here. Georgia executed Carlton Michael Gary on March fifteenth, twenty eighteen without any federal court review of substantial evidence suggesting he did not commit the crimes for which he was convicted and sentenced to death. Prosecutors argued that in the late 1970s, a single serial rapist and murderer killed three elderly white women and burglarized and raped 
a half dozen others with a signature style that led the media to salaciously dub him the stocking strangler. But if, as the prosecution insisted, a single person committed these murders, evidence that was never presented to the jury and never considered by any federal court suggests that it couldn't have been Carlton Gary. Although Gary was charged with three rapes and murders, the prosecution presented evidence of other uncharged crimes under the theory that they had all been committed by the same person. The most damning of all the evidence was the eyewitness testimony of a survivor, surviving victim who dramatically identified Gary as the person who had raped her and tied a stocking around her neck. However, a police statement withheld from the defense indicated that the witness had initially told investigators that she had been asleep and her bedroom dark at the time of the assault and she could not describe, let alone identify, her attacker. So here's an example. Post-conviction DNA testing of semen stains on the victim's bed clothing excluded Gary. See? Hmm. This is an example of This law guy was killed this year. Yeah, this year. This year. This is what I'm talking about, dude. This, th- this was an example of law enforcement coming up with a theory about the crimes... And making somebody fit it, and legal jockeying to not allow new evidence to come to light, and they just killed him. They just killed him. Think about the horror of that. Think about somebody in your family being implicated in a crime. Think about yourself being implicated in a crime that you didn't commit, being lifted out of your life by the state, put on death row, and killed for something you had nothing to do with. The, the rest of that list, if you go down farther, is people who were likely innocent but died on death row awaiting their execution. Oops. Sorry. This is fucked. This doesn't work. Okay? Like, we cannot continue to trust an imperfect system when people's actual lives are on the line. This, this is, is different from putting somebody in prison where there's an opportunity for them to be exonerated. All right? That's already bad enough, an innocent man rotting in a jail cell. But taking that innocent man and strapping him to a table and putting lethal in, uh, chemicals in his body or gassing him to death or boiling him to death when he did nothing wrong, that's not justice. That's murder. <coughs> I think it's too just, fallible, dude. We're, I think it's we're funny too fucking that our emotional. Society... Go ahead, Scotty. We're too emotional. We're too fallible. We're too, we're, I mean, we're too likely to make mistakes. We're too likely to lie. You know, a lot of times just the police going... Well, this guy seems as good as any to pin this shit on. Because a lot of times you see the defense withheld, I mean, the prosecution withheld evidence. They lied. They, they, they fucking admitted statements. They didn't tell them this. They didn't do this. There's no way this guy could have done this. They extracted a shitty false yeah, confession. There's, there's so many fucking instances of this happening. There's a there's a, a great documentary called The Thin Blue Line about, um, it's an Errol Morris documentary, one of the most brilliant documentaries ever made, about um, a guy named Randall Patrick McMurphy. No, that's that's the name of the guy in fucking One Flew Over the Cuckoo's, Cuckoo's Nest. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember what his name is. It's Randall something. Randall Dale Adams. That's what it was. Okay. And he was um, convicted of killing a police officer in cold blood and put on death row in Texas hmm. and was exonerated by the documentary because the evidence was so crazily pointed towards another person and so crazily the evidence that had come to light after the trial. So crazily exonerated uh, Dale Adams that the, the movie being released caused him to be released. So had Errol Morris not stumbled upon this case with all this weird irregularity and made a movie about it, he'd be dead now. Yeah. Or at least on death row. More no, he, he, he was in Texas. He'd be oh, dead he's now. He was in Texas. Okay, yeah, he'd be dead. They, they have a fast lane. To he's the, alive to this day, has a family. Has a life. <laughs> Didn't kill a police officer in Texas. Uh, I just think it's, I mean, like, you know, uh, I, I, I think that there's no way you could ever have a perfect justice system. But, I mean, even if you could 100% incontrovertibly prove this guy is a heinous, evil piece of shit who've, who's done some of the most disgusting, do, do we prevent their acts. crimes? Do we... Do we- after the fact, prevent the crimes by killing this person. Do we stop? Do we? Do we can we go back in time? And I say, don't hey. believe in turning. I don't believe in the state having the right to kill people. I don't believe in the state having the right to. I mean, like, look, if if the cops have to shoot someone because there's a hostage situation, it's like we got to take this guy out or something. That's one thing. But to coldly and dispassionately, like, we've already neutralized the threat. But let's kill anyway. Let's make the decision to use violence and to use deprivation of life, which we've, which is probably the reason that person is there in the first place. Let's hypocritically destroy them. 
out of some misguided attempt to turn our justice system into a system of retribution and revenge. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy it. I just don't well, buy it. Also- and I think that I honestly think you know that for some crimes there is no sufficient punishment, but. There is the, the there's a, it's a more sufficient punishment to say that you're just going to be locked up for the rest of your existence than it is to say well we're going to kill you. It's imperfect but at the very least it gives you the option to live and for new evidence to come to light and for you to be exonerated for your crime. When they lop your fucking head off, put you in the gas chamber, That's electrocute done. you to death. There's really no point. You might be exonerated po- uh, like posthumously, but it's like or posthumously, but it's not. That doesn't matter to you. Your life is over. Well, also, it's also just an ancient way of thinking about. It. It's an archaic way. It's an you know, it's the eye for an eye. We Paul, showed that tonight. Yeah. How far back this goes and how imperfect it is and how Paul, liberally uh, it was. I'm applied. hearing that Randall Adams is actually uh, dead as of 2010. Okay. Well, I didn't know oh. that. I hadn't heard about right, Randall of Adams. Natural causes. So. Right. Natural. That's what. Okay. So that's thank fine. you for the correction. We're not worried about it. He, he hey, if he died, he died. But he didn't die. <laughs> he didn't die in prison. Yeah. In he prison. Didn't, he didn't Where die did he being hooked up to an electric chair. And how for many years did he? Cop. How many years did he spend in prison? Um, I, I don't remember exactly, but it was more years than he should have. Let's put it that way. It's um, it's crazy to me that this is even still a thing in our country. This uh, year. Happened this year. Yeah, I mean, an innocent person executed this year with an eyewitness who was in a dark room who couldn't possibly have seen her attacker with DNA evidence contradicting the state's case. And no one would listen to the appeal the courts ignored this the evidence that this guy wasn't guilty and just went ahead and executed him. That's just murder they, by the state. They liked because they liked the fact the case was resolved. Yep, because it's better to have a case. Off. That's why that's why uh, Randall Dale Adams was railroaded because it was a cop that was killed and the cops were like, we got to catch our man. Yeah, and they don't want the fucking and and the, and the thing they hate the most. The government does not want is to be seen as making mistakes in these type of cases. So it's like, oh no, he killed them. Nope, that's it. There's all this evidence. No, 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 no. He killed them. That's what yep. happened. They don't actually want to do the work and find the person that did kill them or admit they just don't know what happened. They want to say, this person did it. Kill them. Yep. And it's just a, an example of something, too, in reading about these old execution methods and how wonky the system of justice was that carried them out. It's an example of the double standard that still exists in society. The double standard is it's okay to send violence down from the top of the hierarchy. But if you ever try or even are suspected of trying to send violence back up that chain, if you're in the lower parts of society and you do something against the people in power, that's when they kill you. That's, that's, the, most, that's the highest of treasons, is sending vi- political violence from the low back up the chain to the powerful. And you see it over and over again. That's why Randall Dale Adams was gaffled up. Because he was accused of shooting a boy in blue, sending violence back up the chain, even though he didn't do it. Yeah, the, the fucking peasants well, look, going, you know what, these taxes are too high, we have no food to eat. Oftentimes nope. the most brutal punishments throughout history, too, were reserved for people who questioned the king. Yep, question authority. And was one of those. Oh, yeah. you question authority? Now you must die the severest of Treason. deaths. Treason questioning the king, undermining the king, or whatever the ruler is. The system is. was more honest about it back then. Like, the the biggest crime is not killing one of your peers. The biggest crime is doing anything against those who are above you, who are your natural superiors. Yep. Um, anyway, we've been talking for quite a while. Want to uh, let you guys know, remember, once again, in case you weren't here, the first time we announced it, that uh, we are doing a DFF and we, we probably not. I mean, you know, probably it's more our than first. annual. It's our first big meetup, inaugural in our inaugural DFF meetup in Los Angeles. Meetup live show, late July. Uh, Stay we, tuned for dates and ticketing on that shit. We will be releasing more information as it is, becomes available to us, and as we you know square away things with our venue and stuff. If you're outside of uh, the area of Los Angeles, the sooner you get your tickets, you know, so when we announce dates and stuff and we've got all that firmed up for you guys, it's going to be way chicker, uh, cheaper, chicker. It's going to be way cheaper for you way to chipper. Yeah, for you to buy your plane tickets or sub- secure your transit and your lodging and shit uh, a couple of months ahead of time than it is to wait till the last minute. So you know, just be ready. And I, I don't miss this, man. If you've got, uh, you know, some vacation time to take this summer, this is going to be kick-ass. And you're in L.A. too. So it's not like we're the only thing to do in L.A. And Right. You know, we did a meet up with the drunken peasants. You know, that was a Friday. This is actually going to be we, – we, we're, we're securing a weekend date. It's going to be at a better time. So 
It's going to be a good it's thing. It's going to be awesome. A musical show. Marshall motherfucking Manson's yep. going to melt your faces. We're going to do a live show in front of you. We're going to get drunk. We're going to get debaucherous. And the people that are there are going to be in, a, in an elite club of people that got to do it. So thank you guys for being patrons. We'll see you next time, yeah? And see you next time. By the way, you both, are, you both are sentenced to death. Oh, Shit. yeah. Every, all of you are sentenced to death. All Everyone here. All right, guys. That was the episode Deep Fat Fried, The Death Penalty. That was the 33rd episode that we ever did for this whole show back when we were all in one location. Of course, since then, uh, you know, we've all kind of uh, split up and now we do our show remotely. I don't know. The energy is exactly the same as it used to be. I feel like we still got pretty good energy. Uh, you know, a lot of times now we do two man shows. Uh, we still do a lot of three-man stuff as well, but, you know, we kind of alternate uh, between the two-man groups at this point a lot of the time so that we can maintain a really aggressive streaming schedule that keeps us uh, fresh and in your feeds. Um, but, of course, we also like to do the three-man shows as well. Uh, it's pretty cool to uh, be able to, you know, look at how things have evolved and uh, look at all the ways we've experimented with content over the years. And... Um, you know, I feel like this is a pretty good uh, deal to join our Patreon, uh, $7 a month. I kind of already went over a lot of it at the beginning. I don't feel like reiterating the whole thing here. Uh, but maybe some of you guys didn't, didn't see that part. But, uh, you know, the, the long and short of it is we got a whole shit ton of content back there that you can easily access for a pretty reasonable fucking price. And um, I think that that's a good thing to do. Um, of course I do, because I mean, it benefits me directly. So obviously I'm not an unbiased person here. You know, you can decide for yourself. But the feedback I get from our patrons has always been positive. And we have a Patreon much larger than, you know, what you would assume from the size of our show. And I think that's because we deliver a lot of value to the people who, li who love our show, who love our content, who, you know, are interested in us as personalities. And, uh, you know, we got stuff uh, from the whole time span that we've been in operation, you know, all the way back. I think we've been doing this show for like four or five years now. Uh, so you got four or five years worth of, worth of shit. You can go fucking check out. Um, you know, and I think most of it pretty fucking goddamn top-notch good. Um, you know, obviously not always the best in terms of like tech. We're not like George Lucas special effects guys or something. But in terms of like being a talk show with three dudes... Uh, sitting around yammering at each other, you know, jacking off at the jaw. I think we're among the best. I really do. Because uh, I watch a lot of these other shows that have similar formats, and it just seems like they're all carbon copies of one another. And they're all just kind of carbon copies, I think, of what we did on DP uh, when we kind of pioneered this sort of uh, format. Um, you know, and I feel like uh, there's, obviously DP2 also had, you know, its roots derivative of, uh, you know, Howard Stern and, and things like that. So I, I'm not saying we invented some new thing. Like, we pretty much just took the radio talk show to the internet and did the more, like, you know, a little bit more subversive, you know, uh, crude humor f uh, flavor of, uh, you know, content. Um, but, you know, I, I look at the stuff that's out there now, and it just seems like every, every time I see one of these shows where it's just a bunch of guys talking... Uh, in like little windows and stuff, I almost immediately click away because I feel like they're all the same. And I feel like ours is different because we're so fucking weird. You know? Um, <laughs> uh, the three of us are just like very different, I think, from the people who tend to be attracted to this nowadays. Um, you know, Scotty never wanted to be a, a, a performer. It was something I kind of pushed him to do. Um, you know, basically because he wanted some kind of... I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the real truth here. Basically, Scotty wanted to be, he wanted in on that fucking DP money. And I'm like, if you're going to be in on this DP money, you got to fucking at least pop in this show and do this shit. And, uh, and he did, you know, credit to him. And, you know, he sucked at first, but I think Scotty has really come into his own as a performer a lot to the point now where he even does, you know, solo stuff over on our, D, on, on our uh, Fighting Boys channel. Uh, he, he does his You're Wrong show, which sometimes he does uh, for patrons and sometimes he does you know, for, uh, for ordinary, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, you guys, the plebs or whatever we call you, um, you know, the, the subhumans that don't give us money. <laughs> um, no, I mean, he does, I mean, like, and, uh, it's great. You know, I remember the first time I really realized that Scotty had uh, come into his own as a performer was, uh, when we did the new Orleans meetup 
and uh, you know, Scotty did his like Q and A section, and uh, he killed. You know, he was really, really fucking good. I mean, I think he had like a tremendous command of that audience and stuff. Anyone who's there, I think, was entertained by it. Like, he really fucking did a great job. Um, you know, kind of outshone me and Paul in a lot of ways. I gotta say, because you know, we were kind of cocky and confident. Like, we know exactly what the fuck we're doing. You know, but Scotty, you know, he he kind of uh, he kind of gave us a little bit of a run for our money at that show. I feel like. Um, you know, so it's like, wow, cool. So, but like, the point is that Scotty never intended to be a personality. So, you know, the fact that he did that, uh, the fact that he's like that, that kind of like everybody that you see on one of these shows is somebody who like is a narcissist who wants to be famous. Scotty never wanted that. I pushed him into that, but I think that's a good thing because he's not the kind of person you normally see doing this shit. You know, Paul. Paul's a dude who probably, like, would not be doing this if, like, he, Paul used to be a guy that casually uploaded stuff every once in a while. It wasn't until he came on DP and did, you know, did the Brett Keen stuff that we, he kind of, like, became, a, like, an audience favorite for a while, and the hate, audience hated him, the audience loved him, and now, you know, it's kind of split, I guess. There's, like, a divisions about, like, I can't stand Paul's salt, or, like, Paul is right, or whatever the hell. You know, and there's people who like Paul's comedy and hate his politics. And there's people that, you know, like his politics and are annoyed by his comedy. And there's every in between, you know. And I, I feel like, you know, that, that's not the kind of person you normally see doing this show either. The, probably the closest to, like, the rote, generic, standard motherfucker is me. <laughs> I'm the typical uh, host of this kind of shit where, you know, I'm just a, a fucking, you know, narcissistic, uh, you know, loudmouth who likes to hear himself talk and, you know, is obsessed with his own opinions to an unhealthy degree and will, will you know, with a freaking bulletproof ego who can just get out here and, and fucking say whatever uh, till the end of time because no one is ever going to fucking say anything that's going to diminish my, you know, extraordinary, uh, unquenchable self-love, right? Like, they're just not going to do it. Because I, I, my ego is inconquerable. It can't be broken. You know, I could be a fucking a homeless, destitute crackhead sucking dicks on the street for a dollar, and I'm still going to be a megalomaniacal um, son of a bitch that thinks he's the greatest person to ever live. So uh, that's pretty much your standard, you know, YouTube guy, really, when it, when it boils down to it. Like, that's how they all are. Um, most of them, anyway. Uh, except for the, some people who got, you know, maybe roped into it by different means, which I think Scotty and Paul both qualify for. But I think that what that does is it brings to this show a different dynamic than what you can see elsewhere. Superficially, I think it's very similar to a lot of other stuff that's being done. But on a deeper level, I think it's not. I think it's very unique. And uh, we're not clout chasers. We're not people who jump on the bandwagon of the popular thing. Maybe we'd be more successful if we were. But um, I think we offer something pretty fucking unique. And I think that's why the people who love our show are so devoted to it to the point where we have a Patreon that massively out, outguns the size of our, our show. Uh, and we thank you guys for that. But as big as our Patreon is, I want it bigger. I will not be happy until each and every single one of you is behind that Patreon paywall. Um, because I think that's where you belong. And I think that you should support this content um, because we work hard to bring it to you and we love doing it. And I feel like we offer a product that's fucking unique and stands apart from the pack. That's my opinion. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to differ with me, you, you feel free to go ahead, but I, I, I think you're wrong. Um, so anyway, that's my, my pitch for the week. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode on the death penalty. Hope you guys enjoy uh, the, all the episodes we've got coming up. Uh, I don't know what we're doing this Friday. I think Paul is uh, doing an episode for us live over on Patreon. As you guys are watching this or around the same time, uh, we're going to be doing a live one on Patreon with Paul. And, uh, you know, that's probably going to be pretty fucking cool. I don't know because it hasn't happened yet. I don't even know what it's about. We'll see. It's going to be a fun time, I'm sure. Um, 
And, uh, you know, I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed uh, this, and I hope you enjoy everything we do in the future, and I hope that you guys will bite that bullet, jump on the other side of that fence, join us in the Valhalla of those who are wise enough to realize that they should become Pessimist Productions patrons. All right, well, that's what I have to say. Love each and every last one of you, whether you decide to join up or not, because you're all human beings, and even though I am a misanthrope, I'm also a hypocrite, and I love humanity. So, peace to all of you. See you next time.